Tradition, legacy, history. These words all describe a player, coach, or contributor's impact on a game, program, or generation. Each week this season, student athletes of this generation will square off with the goal of best representing their community today or for years to come. Neil O'Connor finds Jake Elaine. For Alan Glenny quarterbacks his ball club. Sucky eyes in the end zone. And calling signals, Dave Velazzi. John Ulecki. Warren Muir. LaQueer, LaQueer, LaQueer. Jack Rodequins. Bobby Mativier. Jason Toomley. Devin Gates. Quentin Tiggs. Cortez Ludden. D. Geronimo. Stephanides. Sean Dupiece McDonald. Graham. Quentin Perkins. Geraldo Rivera. Gray makes the catch in the end zone for the <laughs> touchdown. <laughs> Who will have their name weaved among the tapestry of legends? Who can add their name among the football greatest in central Massachusetts? You'll find out right here on RFM. Continuing a legacy and tradition of audio excellence established by generations of great play-by-play -play teams gone before. Yours truly, Tom Connery, Dave Spence, and Warren Muir. This is Joe White. With me this morning, Chris Dickey and Ron Lamar. Ed Cole along with Joe DeCarolis and Mark Landon. This is Dave Clark along with Mike Flynn. I'm Dave Svens, along with my partner, Luke Connery. Todd Robbins alongside Ben Parker. Todd Robbins, Bill Thomas, Kate Robbins, and you. Great to have you along with us. Stories told through the words spun by legends. The stories continue to be described by the award-winning team of today. It's time for high school football with the award-winning team of Todd Robbins, Bill Thomas, and Kate Robbins. From historic Doyle Field in Lemonster, we say a very good evening, everyone, and welcome back to spring football here on RFM Audio. It's great to have you along with us for the Central Massachusetts All-Star Classic, the eighth annual edition of this meeting, reorganized a little bit and reimagined for this year as tonight the Midland Wachusett League All-Stars get set to take on and battle the All-Stars of the rest of the leagues in Central Massachusetts. We're looking forward to an exciting round of action here tonight. We've got the exclusive live audio for you, those of you joining us on Friday night, June the 16th. For the rest of you who are joining us in delay, you get the complete audio and video broadcast 24 hours later on Saturday the 17th. Wherever you are, whenever you're joining us, we're happy to have you along with us on the platforms of RFM, whether it's YouTube, Facebook Live, or Twitch, like, follow, and subscribe when the action goes live. It finds you on your social media device of choice. From our traditional broadcast position here at Doyle Field, Todd Robbins for RFM. Great to be joined, as always, by Bill Thomas and Kate Robbins for another edition of High School Football here on RFM. And this one, our second time exclusively carrying this game here on RFM, and we are very excited to be here for this all-star matchup. About 120 student athletes, seniors specifically, out for their final bow in their high school athletic colors and the colors of the Midland Wachusett and Central Mass All-Stars. It's going to be a fun one. I welcome in Bill Thomas, and Bill Thomas, here we go. Another year means football is on the way back. It is spring football, it is the Central Mass All-Star Classic, and it's great to be here once again. Yeah, it absolutely is, Todd. And you talk about a great night for football and just a, a great tradition that, uh, you know, has been started here, getting these seniors together and, uh, you know, us having the opportunity to cover it and, and give it the coverage it deserves. And, uh, you know, this you're talking about these aren't All-Stars. This has nothing to do with being an All-Star. Yeah, it's kind of an invitational. It's but it's kids that, you know, might be a neighbor, but just across the, the uh, in another town or another school, but because of divisions or, or leagues or whatever, never get a chance to play against each other or with each other. And I think it's a great opportunity for that. Usually that only happens at the all-star level, but this is a different type of, 
of get together. One last time for a lot of these kids. <clears throat> these aren't all college bound with, with D1 scholarships, uh, you know, that, that have a, a starting spot waiting for them in a football team this fall. So great opportunity. Get together one last time and have fun. For some of them, it will be the last time they don a football uniform and get a chance to play. So it's a celebration of their high school careers and their athletic competition. And for others, it's the last time at the high school level before the first time at the college level as they get set to, to embark, most of them having already finished their high school graduations and on their way to their universities and colleges of their choices come the fall. Yeah, and they're here on their own free will. Yes. They're not playing for the next scholarship, uh, you know, to try to impress anybody except themselves, their friends, have fun one last time. The, and the thing that's striking, they have a, a great uniform combination, uh, uh, but uh, everybody's wearing their own team helmets. And uh, that, that's just a great look, and it's something we can watch for tonight. Pro Bowl-esque, each wearing their unique high school football uniforms. Most of them returned back to their local athletic departments after their off-season reconditioning, and so players get their first chance to wear their colors or their last chance, in this case, after they've returned from reconditioning. Third member of the broadcast team, Kate Robbins. And Kate, great to have you back on site with us here for this Central Massachusetts All-Star Classic, Midwatch and Central Mass All-Stars. Of course, these are the only times where you're ever going to get to see the mix and match. Mm -hmm. Putting the Midland and Wachusett League together, you get Lemonster and Fitchburg on the same teams as Hudson and Algonquin and Clinton on one side. And on the other side, you get teams like Tantasqua from Central Mass because they're a Southern Worcester County League team. You get St. Bernard's and St. Paul's and St. John's all on the same team together playing on the Central Massachusetts squad. So it's these unique rivalry now mix and matches in order to get them to play. And Kate, if anybody was expecting this to be a controlled scrimmage, they've come to the wrong place. We saw the flea flicker for an opening <laughs> touchdown on the first play last year. These coaches are coming to play. And from reports from, uh, from Coach Howard Harold Ogilvy, their practices, these 120 student athletes have been turning out to get ready for this game tonight. Well, they're certainly excited. This is one of the, the aspects that's kind of unique. Most of the time, when you have an all-star game for a season, it's right at the tail end of the season. Well, the football season here in Massachusetts ends in December, and you might as well get, in, you know, get on your, your, your horse-drawn sleigh and try <laughs> to get somewhere. So it makes sense that you wait till the weather is better, wait until... You can get all of these people together a little bit later on. It's seniors only, as you said. And it's nice to see the mix and match, not just necessarily with rivalries, but also the various divisions. Yes. You have St. John Shrewsbury and you have St. Bernard's and their teammates with one another. You can't necessarily get farther apart on the spectrum relative to class size. Sure. And so kind of a kind of a nice combination because you always talk about oh division one oh division this oh division that and you know sometimes those divisions five six seven ought you know they're smaller schools there's not as much pomp and circumstance because their their their, their class size is so much smaller Lovely to see them being able to play together. And it's going to be a lot of fun to see them support one another out on the field here tonight. Introductions have begun down on the turf here at Doyle Field. Historic public address announcer here at Doyle Field, Dick Tucker at the microphone, introducing all 120 athletes in for competition. And of course, we're pledging to sort of do the same on this broadcast, sort of adopting that legacy. If you are good enough, they say, if you're good enough to play in the U.S. Open, you will get mentioned on the U.S. Open broadcast at some point over the hours and hours and hours that is going to happen uh, across the NBC Universal platforms uh, over the next four days, right? Same principle here for our broadcast on RFM. If you are good enough to be one of the 120 athletes that are here tonight, you are good enough to have your name mentioned on this broadcast. So it creates a little bit of a fun competition for us as well here on the broadcast side of things because we've got to try to figure out how to fit in 120 names throughout the night. Uh, that some will will most play. We, we found that last year. Most of the 120 athletes will get out on the field. Some of them maybe just for a special teams opportunity. Some of them maybe, you know, in different waves on various offensive groupings. It will be a lot of fun to see. The quarterbacks, it seemed like, divvied up, played quarters. Uh, that was sort of how they did it in, uh, in previous years. But it will, uh, it will be interesting to see how this goes on. As we look down on the turf below, 
Coach Harold Ogilvie, who is of Clinton High School, is greeting every single athlete on the Central Massachusetts All-Star Squad right now down on the field. And that, and that just talks about this camaraderie. We always talk about the community that is high school football, and specifically the community that is Central Massachusetts football. And that's what you're seeing on display here as the players get introduced. Yeah, and I think it's a show of appreciation on both sides. Coach Ogilvie for their participation and the kids you know, for the uh, effort that the coaches put in, you know, and, and to swing back to the coaches, you know, a lot of coaches here tonight, you know, I saw a half a dozen of them at the front gate, uh, you know, Coach Gage, Coach Bingham, Coach Ogilvy, you know, they're all out there, you know, with the t-shirts and uh, just a great event tonight and I'm sure there's a lot more here and and we'll have a few of them visiting with us uh, as the game goes on. And uh, more than happy to share some thoughts about the game and, and the experiences from it. And this whole event is organized by the Joseph R. Mawinney chapter of the National Football Foundation. Uh, it is a part scholarship event. We had the opportunity to go to last year's scholarship banquet. What a tremendous event that is every year. Uh, awarding and rewarding student athletes for both their academic and athletic prowess out on the, uh, on the football fields across Central Mass as as well players make speeches and of course all of this is all part of supporting the existence of those scholarships yeah and it wasn't just one you're talking scholarships i think yes. you saw him hand out eight or ten yeah, something uh, up, on the, fact, yes. up on the uh the, the the head table last year just a great organization and uh you know, this is a great event, but it takes an event like this to be able to produce results like that. Indeed, they do. And that is, of course, what the name of the game is here. And, of course, Bill Thomas alluded to it a little while ago, the sort of history of this eighth annual playing in this Central Massachusetts All-Star Game. And this is all an outgrowth, of course, of the old Chowder Bowl. The Chowder Bowl back in the day was sort of the thing. It was the All-Star Game. The Shriners had a version of it that came later on. Um, and that went for a long time. And then when that went by the wayside about eight or nine years, years ago, the coaches and the folks here in central Massachusetts, athletic directors, officials all got together and said, we need to maintain this presence of an all-star game. We need to get together and, uh, and annually recognize these student athletes. And that is the outgrowth of this central Massachusetts all-star class. Yeah. And I, I think it's just gotten bigger and better every year. And, uh, you know, the, I'm glad to see the continued success through the, you know, the year or two. Uh, you know, a lot of things never bounce back uh, through the tough times we've had the last couple of years. Uh, but uh, this has hold true, uh, tried and true, and uh, I couldn't be happy to be part of it tonight. It's great football weather. You know, we were joking. We've been covering baseball and football weather, and all of a sudden <laughs> we get baseball weather for a football game. But I couldn't be happier. It's a great night tonight. Uh, the flag is just hanging still. Uh, Maybe a little muggy for kids in uniforms, but there'll be a lot of substitutions tonight, and everybody's happy to be wearing that uniform, and especially the ones that might be for that very last time. And Kate, Coach Ogilvie was talking with me a little while ago about you know this location coming here at Doyle Field, the crown jewel, he called it, <laughs> of Central Mass. Coach Ogilvie, big fan of the historic bowl here at Doyle Field and sort of this perfect place here in Central Mass to get everybody all together. Well, that's one of the beauties. You truly are in in the midst of of central Massachusetts. Obviously, Lemonster being on the northern on the northern end, but easily e easy enough to get to up 190 down Route Two here, there, and everywhere. We're proximal to quite a few uh, major thoroughfares, if sure. you will. Parking not usually a problem. <laughs> you know, the bowl itself, 1930s. It's Beautiful, renovated uh, just over a decade ago, turf, etc. We have that natural bowl come in. The the coolest thing for the student athletes coming out of the tunnel from the historic locker rooms as well. We certainly love it. We know we're biased, however. Uh, I was going to say this is uh, home away from home for this broadcast team. To, uh, to say the least, and uh, we've been very fortunate over the uh, over the years to uh, to continue to spend time here at uh, at this location, and can't say enough good things uh, about having our opportunity to be here at Historic Doyle Field once again. So great to have you along with us, Todd Robbins, Bill Thomas, Kate Robbins, and you as the All-Stars of the Midland Wachusett League are now introduced and greeted by their coaching staff and Coach Harold Ogilvie representing the Joseph R. Mawinney chapter of the National Football Foundation. As the introductions continue and we work our way toward the National Anthem, we'll continue it right here with you. We're going to step aside for just a moment, reset things here at Historic Doyle Field, and when we come back, it's National Anthem and kickoff of the 8th edition of the Central Massachusetts All-Star Classic, and it's right here exclusively on RFM. 
Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association annually sanctions the sportsmanship awards to students, adults, and schools for exemplary behavior. The intent is to enhance the educational ideals sought by the MIAA and to encourage sportsmanship as a major objective in their experience as participants. This is just another example of activities enhancing student development in a unique and motivating laboratory for learning. Your support and encouragement of these important ideals is appreciated. The Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association, building the future through educational athletics. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Mm -mm. Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. Uh. Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Uh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. High School Sports provides an extension of the classroom, where students learn to pursue excellence, the value of working with others toward a common goal, playing within the structure of established rules, discipline, loyalty, and emotional control. The MIAA urges you to demonstrate your support for these values and for our young people by attending high school competitions in your community. The Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association, building the future through educational athletics. This is Bob Sosie, the voice of New England football. For the best high school football action in North Central Mass, featuring our award-winning broadcast team of Todd Robbins, Bill Thomas, and Kate Robbins, keep it right here. historic Doyle Field here on RFM Audio and great to have you along with us. The 8th Annual Central Massachusetts High School Football Classic right here on RFM. Introductions continue here at Historic Doyle Field and we have the last introduction that has been made for the Midland Wachusett League group and that was Troy Vento of Oakmont was the last to get introduced here at Doyle Field and now the final pieces fall into place and we will have the national anthem which we will sync up with let's join public address announcer Dick Tucker here at Doyle Field <laughs>
you look out over the turf here at Doyle Field tonight, and as the final few notes of the National Anthem play, you see the players in unison holding their helmets aloft, and you see that cornucopia of different school colors, logos, and looks. Prior to this, 8th Annual Central Massachusetts all-Star Classic. It is going to be another dandy. Captain's getting ready to head to midfield to meet with the All-Star officiating crew here tonight. Coaching staffs for this one. The Midland Wachusett League is going with the coaching staff writ all from the Titans of Algonquin. Mark Allen is the head coach. Taylor Allen, the assistant coach. Tyrone Notis, Bill Griffin, Andrew Brooks, Corey Pooler, Dan Martin, Cam Gallagher, Dylan Lindsay, John Cahill, John McAuliffe, and Andrew Buschetto all represent Algonquin in coaching this mid-watch all-star team. The rest of Central Mass head coach Bob LaRose of South High School, Mike Maldonado, Freddie Leone, Chris Capullo, Nick Carboneau, Micah Cummins, and Jameel Jackson, all of South High School. The other assistant coaches, Jeff Clarkson, Jim Nolan, and Pete Gleason, all of Oxford. Dan Cherry, Phil Rainbow, Joe Doyle, Dominic Mitchell of North, and Bobby Thorson of Abby Kelly, all contributing to coach the Central Mass All-Star Squad as they meet at midfield with the officials. It appears that the visiting team will be the Central Massachusetts team, so they will, Bill Thomas, call the toss, and this is your show. The coin toss, as always, with Bill Thomas. Looks like uh, Blue has won the toss. Central Mass. Central Mass. Uh, excuse me, uh, Midwatch All-Stars. Mid yes, yeah. yeah, that is the Midwatch All-Star team. They have deferred, and uh, the uh, Central Mass team are receiving the opening kickoff. Let's play some football. Indeed they are. See out there. A sea of familiar faces, one that stands out, of course, for the gold and delta wings, Damian Jones of St. Bernard's for the South, or the formerly South, now Central Mass All-Star Squad. How many times will I screw that yeah, up Yeah, I know. You'll be just as, the, as the case may be. It was North-South last in. year. That we was the get whole all, thing. Well, we, you know, whether it's from South High or South something, uh, North and South, the uh, Chowder Bowl and... Uh, you know, the corn, you know, the clam chowder and corn chowder bowl. I don't know. Call it what you want, but we're ready to play some football. It's going to be a great game tonight. Indeed we are, and we're looking forward to this one. Ball heads out to the tee, 40-yard line at our right, and the kicking duties for Midwatch will be handled by Alex Klein, the all-everything kicker of the Titans of Algonquin. Klein, of course, is working his way toward a college opportunity. I've seen him kick online. He has committed to Endicott College. Six foot, 185 pounds, Alex Klein will be kicking in the CCC, the Commonwealth Coast Conference for Endicott College come this fall. Awesome it's to hear. Give me a goal. You know, I'm sitting here smiling. I'm counting zebras. <laughs> the officials could get together and form their own team tonight. There are so many officials here tonight in stripes. Joe, what a great look. Uh, Great way for, the, for these kids to end their, their career for most of them. But uh, just an all-around, you couldn't get more top-notch professional looking than what we've got here tonight. Klein's ready. The whistle to begin play. Klein checks his line. He'll be kicking from right to left. Klein on the approach, swings the right leg, and it's a line drive down the middle of the field. It will check up to, who else? Damian Jones, who slow plays his move across the 10-yard line, then the 15, cut back across the 20, met in the teeth there, and taken down on the play. Right across the 25 and down around the 27-yard line. Great pursuit made there. It was Caleb Luz of Hudson making the tackle. I'm telling you, Todd, we got multiple uniform, uh, same, multiple numbers on, uh, same number on multiple kids, and, and good luck figuring out who's, who's doing what. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to do some spotting based on uh, helmets and, uh, you know, some, some recollections and, and positions. But uh, good luck with that tonight. Players Todd. are wearing their high school jersey numbers or a number of their choice. And here comes the handoff, goes straight up the middle. Like Angelo LaRose of South High School on the carry there. And a familiar Josh Cormier, I think, in on defense from his middle linebacker position, number 44. That's a number we spent a lot of time calling. Indeed, of Lemonster. I think he's got something going on uh, this fall, too, as I recall. He does. He's heading to Castleton. There we go.
So we got to start playing uh, uniform bingo. Too Indeed tall. we do. This is <laughs> looks like Money Tech, and it is at the quarterback spot. That is Logan Quinn, the quarterback from Money Tech that got the first carry, kept it himself, took it around and to the right, crossed the 30-yard line and down around the 33. So Logan Quinn from Money Tech gets the first quarterbacking opportunity here for the Central Mass All-Star squad. Saw the ball pop up there at the end of the play. Ground cannot cause a fumble uh, on the way down. I think elbow and then ground, ball, ball popped up. Official right on the spot. I tell you, we got so many officials here tonight. They're not going to miss a trick. They're going to be on top of every play. Uh, just, uh, I, I love it. Keep the game moving. We're playing 12-minute quarters tonight. Uh, hopefully get everybody in and uh, keep things going. This is Quinn in the shotgun set. Two backs. The handoff is for Jones, coming from his wide receiver slot to the left, gets the handoff, wraps his way across the 30, and then he's wrapped and tackled and taken down by Gio Roman of Lemonster in on the tackle. Nice job by the defense here. And you gotta wonder who's a step ahead of who here, offense or defense? Uh, maybe defense because it's more reactionary and the timing might be off a little bit on the offense when it comes to coordinate your blocks and your moves, your cuts. But uh, we'll have to see. Uh, you know, maybe the, the passing game, if a couple of kids get together, might uh, might open up something. But uh, have to see how the game progresses. Roman's on his way to Worcester State in the fall. Fourth down here. Fourth down and about five to go from the 33. Punt formation here, and the punt is away. I like that. No rush punt. And no. Let's not get anybody hurt. Ricky Encarnacion no with the fair catch at the 35-yard line, and that's where the Midwatch All-Stars will begin their first drive. Familiar name, Ricky Encarnacion, just coming off uh, the spring track. Uh, haven't had a chance to talk to him. I know he's going to some end-of-the-season meets, and... Uh, you know, he's looking forward to uh, his next uh, venture when he moves on next year. Going to be uh, a Division II Northeast 10 Charger of the University of New Haven. TJ Welch of Shrewsbury is going to be the quarterback to start for the Midwatch All-Stars. Welch is in a shotgun set. Four receivers out in the formation, a tight end flanked off the right. Single back is Stinson in the backfield. Welch drops back to pass. A little shoulder shiver, a little jump pass. Comebacker complete for Encarnacion. Cross the 35 and down at the 36-yard line. You know, and uh, right away I'm wondering if a couple of kids might not have gotten together and uh, said, you know, let's just work on something ourselves. Uh, a little one-on-one, -on -one, a curl here and there. Some, it's really about timing and uh, see how that that works uh, into the offense. With so many things that are going on at this time of the year, you would think it would be difficult to get teams together, but Coach Ogilvie said they were getting routinely 80, 90, sometimes 100 of the 120 athletes across both teams showing up to practice over the last couple of weeks to be prepared for this. And, and the weather's been and good for kids wanting to come out and practice too. It hasn't really been beach weather, so it's good to see. Welch in a shotgun set, Newton next to him, four receivers ride, trips to the left. Welch the snap, rolls toward the trips, looks into the boundary, throws through the hands and incomplete it was Brendan O'Brien of Hudson got the gloves on it but couldn't reel it in. Yeah, a little hot right there. Nice job, though, rolling out. Would have been a little short of a first down. It's going to bring up a third down. Third down and about eight to go. Ball at the 36-yard line, right hash. Midwatch going right to left, wearing the navy blue tops, the emerald green bottoms, white numerals, front and back, central mass across the chest, player's name arched on the nameplate in the back, wearing their specific high school helmets with some slight genericized modifications. The Lemonster helmets on Encarnacion, just a plain white tonight, no royal blue stripe, and etc. Welch back to pass, looks slot for O'Brien. They say it is a catch across the 40 at the 41. He'll gain five on the play, but it is he should, indeed a complete pass, Bill He Thomas. should know better than trying to get up and run after that, though, but uh, <laughs> watching too much uh, pro football or uh, Madden uh, 23 maybe, but uh, yeah, down at the point of the catch there. Nice effort, but uh, you can't get up and advance that. Sets up mid-watch for a fourth down and about three to go. They need their own 44-yard line going from right to left for a first down. Instead, Klein's on the field from Algonquin, stands at his own 27-yard line in punt formation. And I like this. Rather than going for it, gives everybody to show off their skills a little bit, punters and, uh, you know, return guys are back there, you know, work on catching the ball and, uh, 
could be doing this at the next level. You know Damian Jones is certainly hoping it comes his way. One of the two return men back, and then it appears Julian Kondratowicz of David Prouty is the other man back in punt formation. Job, punt is away, catch. fair catch made by Jones, crossed the 25 at the 27-yard line. And that is where Central Mass will set up shop, which is only a few yards back. Bill Thomas from where their last drive ended. So they'll have first down and 10. They're on 27 coming left to right. Yeah, exchange of punts. And uh, early on here, didn't expect uh, a lot offensively. But uh, see if it opens up. Now the offense has a chance to get together with the coaching staff on the sideline. See what uh, come out here for second series for, uh, um, for the Central Mass All-Stars. Quarterback change for Central Mass. This is Oxford's quarterback, Lucas Lambert, I believe, if I've got that number right. And yeah, Lambert on the carry there, sent it straight up the middle uh, in the hands of Bill Thomas, trying to get all our numbers in there. It's Uxbridge, number 28 on that previous play was Quinn. As the rollout this time comes from Lambert, the throw right into the boundary is short and incomplete. It'll bring up third down. Looked like ran down by uh, Logan. I say uh, another, another familiar name. And uh, Lemons, the kids, uh, getting some, uh, some name recognition here in the first quarter. Some early first string play. That is for darn sure. So this is Lambert, shifts her back in motion from right to left. Lambert back to pass on five steps, sets, throws a wobbler over the middle of the field, jump ball, leaping and making the catch across midfield and down at the 46 yard line. It's a beautiful catch made on that play. I'm trying By, to see him. He I was got it. It's the, Garrett Ranieri of St. John's who made the 15, catch. Yeah, yes. but uh, and I'll battle that one of his teammates. I didn't get the number, but a great effort. About five kids up for the ball at the same time, and he came down with it. And it's a first down, and the drive continues for Central Mass. Handoff goes straight up the middle. It was a keeper for Lambert on that play. Roman loses a helmet at the end of the play for the mid-watch. He will check out and be substituted for. George Paguana will take his spot out on the field from Algonquin. Sharing that number with Encarnacion tonight. A little different build. I think we can keep an eye on Indeed. either one of them. Lambert out of the gun again, back to pass in second and ten. Hit as he throws, middle of the field, and it is an interception made. Midwatch will take over the football. A phenomenal interception made on the play. Looked like, like 30, Dom Vinchula on the interception for Shrewsbury. Is that who you had, Tom? Indeed. Yep, nice job right there downfield. And Vinchula is on his way to Rochester Institute of Technology. 5'11", 160 pounds, and Vinchula has got himself an interception. He's on the board, and it's mid-watch football. Nice. First down and 10 going right to left. Nice little memory. Um, you know, and that's the great part. You know, each game, each year, a little different feeling, a little different flow. Last year we mentioned it was the flea flicker chucked down the middle of the field for the touchdown to open the ball game for what was the South All-Star team last year. And now this year, more of a feeling out process. Got more of that boxing match feel. You, Stick, jab, move in the first round. Well, you know, just open up that offense a little bit here. Second possession, we'll have to see... Uh, you know what uh, Central, uh, what uh, the uh, Midwatch does here with their second possession. They came out throwing the ball first possession. Uh, you know, maybe uh, just a little more preci precision right here. Welch will continue at the quarterback spot. Shotgun set, four receivers wide. He'll keep the football himself. Hits the first hole, rolls off the initial contact, crossing the 15 and down around the 17, maybe the 18 yard line. Game three, maybe four on the play. Call it three, second down and seven. Ball at the 18 yard line, going right to left for the Midwatch All-Stars. Not sure who do you, uh, I see, it uh, looks like number one, uh, but I can't pick up, looks like the gold helmet, number one. Todd, you want to help me out with uh, who that is on defense for uh, for Central Mass? Uh, uh, Doherty. Could be uh, from Doherty. Uh, Jay yeah, Nathalie. Jay, Jay Nathalie, that's who was on the corner right there, big stick. And a quarterback change here and a quick flip to Makai Newton of Lemonster. Takes it around and to the right. Across the 15 to the 16 and the 17 yard line. Not able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Loses two on the play. Uh, defense did a nice job stringing that out, Todd. And so it'll bring up a third down and about a yard to go for Midwatch deep in their own territory. A little different philosophy here coming out with a couple of straight runs. 
third and long. Good chance maybe to try to go downfield, even if, uh, you know, long long pass, maybe uh, not worry so much about an interception, but uh, just get the ball downfield here. And whistles kill the play, and the Midwatch All-Stars, little confusion. They're going to take a timeout and talk things over. There's a change on that Midwatch All-Star quarterback position. We've got number eight in there from Algonquin, and of course, Unfortunately, the only number eight we have is Mark Moran. We've got about a dozen ones, twos, and zeros, but only one number eight, unfortunately, from, El uh, from anywhere, and it's Mark Moran of Clinton, and that is a most definitely an Algonquin helmet, which I have been told there are a few extra Algonquin helmets that have been deployed, so that very well may be Mark Moran of Clinton at the and, quarterback spot. And I see Algonquin helmets with numbers on the back that don't necessarily match the number of the uniform, and we know the kids had the choice they wanted to pay for this shirt, they'd get the name on it, and they could have their actual game uniform number. And uh, that's why you see uh, multiple repeat numbers. But uh, yeah, we, we are seeing some helmets that don't necessarily match up with the numbers. It was easy to know that a play-by-play -play announcer didn't make the decision about that, Bill <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> I heard you politic for uh, a, a, uh, zero to 99, sequence. work it very simply, because you know, uh, I'm but looking. But they couldn't sell that to the players. They could but the Central Mass All-Stars have four number ones. I said, if they all <laughs> flank out wide, and I've got four receivers wearing one, we're going to have a serious problem. <laughs> We'll get him on camera if we can. But Moran's yeah. back to pass. He rolls to his left and throws. Pass is complete. Over the middle, it's Kyle Arias of Hudson who makes the catch across the 15-yard line and down across the 20 to the 21. It's going to leave a fourth down and about three to go for the mid-watch. A good play, Bill Thomas, but short of the sticks. And what you expect in an all-star game, it's a very vanilla situation offensively yeah, thus far. Yeah, punt team comes out, but... Uh, you can't miss that hawk on the side of that white uniform. He's easy to identify. Klein stands back in punt formation at his own eight-yard line, waiting to kick from right to left. Damian Jones back to return. Snap clear. Klein the kick a little bit off the side of the foot. Jones will catch that punt standing at his own 44-yard line for the Central Mass All-Stars, and he will... Fair catch that ball. First down in 10 for Central Mass. Third offensive possession as they go left to right and Bill Thomas by this sort of back and forth. Central Mass has actually advanced to their cause <laughs> closer to midfield. I was thinking they've gained about 15 yards in field position here in this uh, exchange of the uh, uh, two possessions each and two punts. But uh, third possession here for Central Mass and see if they open it up a little bit. So it'll be first down and 10 to go for Central Mass. Ball located at the 44-yard line going left to right. Another quarterback change for Central Mass. Going back to the original starting quarterback from Monty Tech, it's Logan Quinn. Quinn sends it through the middle of the field. Carry like made there, uh, Bill Thomas. Looked like eight to me. Could have been. I was looking at... Uh, or six Angelo LaRose again. Gio Roman lost his helmet again. He's got to do a little uh, strap adjustment there because it costs him a play every time that helmet comes rolling out of a pile. Indeed it does. First wave of players still out on the field here in this opening quarter, 3.30 and counting to play here in quarter one. Scoreless, the eighth annual Central Massachusetts All-Star Classic organized by the Joseph R. Mawinney chapter of the National Football Foundation. And we've got whistles in our first flag of this eighth annual All-Star Classic. Perhaps uh, an illegal formation there, Bill Thomas, or a legal yeah, shift. That's I think the signal. Jay Nathalie was a little quick upfield there in his uh, motion. Uh, official right there. I tell you, not, they're not going to miss anything. He was right on that motion line. Uh, turn it upfield just a tick too quick. Cost him five in the line Indeed of scrimmage. Indeed it will, and move the ball back across the 40. Five to the 43-yard line, middle of the field, which sets up a second down and 11 to go. Quinn at the quarterback spot, shotgun set, the snap, put it in the belly of LaRose, and LaRose has got some room across midfield and down across the 45, and then the 40 marked back at the 42-yard line, but it is a first down run for LaRose of South High School. 
And Bill Thomas, South's got something going here. Got a little movement. Yeah, and I think it, it's let's ride the big guy downfield because uh, he was a load coming around that corner. And uh, nice job right there. Way to pick up that first down. Maybe, maybe build some momentum here with the running game. The Rose is on his way to be a Cardinal from the NESCAC, Wesleyan University, where he will continue his education. Five foot ten. Now Jones will go to the running back spot. Shotgun set here for Welch, and flags and whistles kill the play once again. And this is going to be just a simple fault start, and it might have been Atherley again who went in motion, built up. Yeah, one, oh, it could have been Brown. I saw the official pointing uh, at uh, Marin Brown out here, the wide out, a little quick off the, off the jump. Uh, didn't quite time the snap count right. Official standing right there. Brown from North High School in Worcester. So mark the ball back across the mid-watch 45 to the 47-yard line at right hash as Central Mass continues from left to right on this first down and 15. Welch, quarterback spot. Jones of St. Bernard's right next to him. Here's the snap. Jones is the lead blocker. Welch keeps it himself, dives into the pile, crosses the 44 to the 45-yard, excuse me, the 46 to the 45-yard line. Gains a couple back from that penalty, and it'll be second down and 13. White's keeping the ball on the ground here, Central Mass. Uh, you know, with the, the coaching staff, Coach Bingham, he's known for a strong ground game over there at St. Bernard's, and uh, it'd be expected in this type of game if you get some success. I hate to see three yards in a cloud of dust, but let's see if we can't use our muscle. Got some meat up front there for the Central Mass All-Stars. See if we can't put it to good use. Darnell Woodson of St. Bernard's does the snapping. Welch in the shotgun set and Jones. The play action fake. Welch swings it out looking for Atherley. Threw his hands and incomplete. And then there's a collision and down on the play goes Brian Aguilar who makes the hit. Bill Thomas from Lemonster. Yeah, a lot going on over there. I kind of lofted that up and uh, a conversion of four players over there and... Uh, Everybody popped up and the uh, ball ended up on the ground, luckily for the Central Mass. Could have went the other way and could be celebrating a touchdown if the timing had been just a little bit different out there. Pass incomplete, third down, third down and 13. And whistles kill the play and Central Mass is gonna talk things over. There may also be an injury. I think Atherley, Bill Thomas, there was an He's awkward contact off. there at the, uh, at the end of the play. To, uh, to say the least. Walking over, but uh, officials want him to get looked at. And I think it's a good move. Uh, great move, actually. But he talks his way back on the field. Down here on the sideline, Bill Thomas. We see now of the MIAA, Dr. Steve Dubzinski. And Bill Thomas, who's with him? Probably a player who would have been in this Central Massachusetts All-Star game. It's Tucker McDonald Tucker. of Wachusett, now of the University of Connecticut. Uh, on his way, competing for a starting spot down there. A huge defensive play back on the field as Jones's run gets pushed back toward midfield, officially marked down at the 47-yard line. It'll be fourth down and long for Central Mass, and they're going to try to push Midwatch deeper into their own territory as Midwatch has struggled, Bill Thomas, to get beyond their own 25-yard line offensively as we're down to 49 seconds and counting here in the opening quarter of a scoreless eighth annual All-Star Classic. Yeah, using this uh, punting strategy for field position here, but... Uh... Good job getting the ball downfield. Yeah, Tucker uh, McDonald uh, sat out the majority of the football season, but he's got a career ahead of him uh, at UConn, I believe. That and, is uh, correct. I think he might have even got a head start uh, he uh, with some spring football down there, but it's good to see him back home. And Carnacion with the fair catch around the 15-yard line for mid-watch, and that's where they'll set up shop. First down and 10. Their own 15 at right hash going right to left for the remaining 38 seconds of this opening quarter. Welch continues at the quarterback spot for the Midwatch All-Stars. Newton in the backfield next to him. Trip formation, tight bunch to the left. Snap, throw, complete for Encarnacion. Encarnacion sheds a defender into the open field. Encarnacion may go. He's got midfield. Now the 30, then the 20. Will anybody catch him? No, they will not. Ricky Encarnacion into the end zone for the Midwatch All-Star touchdown. And it's row, 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 row your boat is the celebration in the end zone. 
as Midwatch is up six zip. Oh, that was awesome. Nice job by Ricky. We got to see that a lot this year. I tell you, you get him the ball in his hands in open field, and then it breaks a couple of initial tackles and gets things strung out and shows the track speed right there. And uh, But uh, a nice little celebration at the end, officials letting them have fun. At least we know what they've been doing in practice. They've, they've worked <laughs> that on that. Was very well the celebrations are down. <laughs> <laughs> Very well coordinated. I'm not sure that that was coach's sanction, but I'm sure they found time for that. Alex Klein to attempt the point after. Cormier holds. Ball down. Klein drives it up onto the Morton Street Hill. And out onto the road. Yeah, as the players come back <laughs> up field, 23 seconds left in the opening quarter. And the Midwatch All-Stars are on top of the Central Massachusetts All-Stars. 7-0 here at Historic Doyle Field in the 8th Annual Central Massachusetts All-Star Classic right here on RFM Audio and RFM in delay full video compliment coming if you're joining us for the audio broadcast tonight great to have you live and along with us here from historic doyle field come on back tomorrow these same rfm platforms youtube facebook live and twitch full and complete video broadcast will be available for you you can see that ricky and carnacio touchdown run wait, 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 and don't the me. row 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 <laughs> your boat that goes with it i got most of it and i think i got it all but uh <laughs> yeah great play right there and yeah please come back and watch the video next uh, uh tomorrow and uh Enjoy every minute of it. I, I'm pretty sure Ricky will be checking it out tomorrow. I have no doubt about that. It'll live in perpetuity on these same social media platforms. Todd Robbins, Bill Thomas, Kate Robbins, and you. Great to have you along with us here for this All-Star Classic. Klein with the ball on the tee back, 40-yard line to our right. The kick, it's a little pooch kick to the first level on the return. And with a full head of steam, it's Matt Marchese of St. John's. He crosses the 40, the 45, and is angled out of bounds at the 48-yard line. I think I had 85 yards on that uh, pitch and catch, 82 of it, I'm going to call, <laughs> yards after catch. Is that, that, that was your, your typical screen pass that uh, let the receiver catch it and uses magic. And Ricky did just that. First down and 10 for Central Mass, their own 48-yard line at left hash. The snap and back to pass with some room. It's Lucas Lambert, sets and throws, wide side of the field, long and incomplete. He was looking for one of the four twos, Bill Thomas. <laughs> Unfortunately, none of them have the same last name as we have been. Well, uh, the last name begins with T? Uh, F. Friedman. Oh, F, okay. It's an eye exam that, that is in yeah. developing year. Lucas you Friedman the of military, yeah. uh, military, of Milbury on the uh, on the attempt. Well, that's the plus side. If, they, if they're multiple numbers, they got their names on them. Lambert back to pass. Now throws a screen pass. This one is complete for Friedman. Shakes a defender, crosses midfield, 45, and angled out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Hey, I I like that coaching maneuver in this kind of an all-star situation. You tried one pass to him on a little go pattern. It didn't work. Come back, throw the screen, give the player that little tip of the cap, makes the catch and makes a play. Yeah, and you know, he's looking to use up that energy that that pass, first pass was just off the mark a little bit. Yeah, go right back to him, see if he can't make something happen. Third down and two to go. Lambert shifts a receiver in motion. It is Freeman from right to left. Out of the gun, the snap. Lambert, hole up the middle of the field. Hits a defender in the second level, cross on the 30, the 25, the 20, down around the 18-yard line. And Lambert on the quarterback keeper plows his way up the middle of the field. He did. He bulldogged his way for the last 10 year yards there. But uh, nice job right up the middle. Broke the initial containment at the line of scrimmage. And a nice gain for a first down, moving the chains as the quarter ends. And that's the way quarter number one in this eighth annual Central Massachusetts All-Star Classic comes to a close. As the team's change ends, it is the Midwatch All-Star 7, the Central Massachusetts All-Stars. Nothing more action to come. Eighth annual All-Star Classic, organized by the Joseph R. Mawinney chapter of the National Football Foundation, right here exclusively on RFM, continues in a moment. Stick and stay with us. This is high school football, and it's right here on RFM. Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. <laughs> <laughs> and now a speech. I just want to say that friendship is about heart, heart and brain. 
Who's with me? Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. And my brain is saying, when it's time to go home, somebody call me a ride. Love that guy. Me too. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Mm. Here on RFM, great to have you along with us as we begin second quarter action. Central Mass All-Stars go right to left. Lambert back to pass, looks to his left and throws. Pass is complete in the hands of Marchese. And then he fumbled right at the end of the play, Bill Thomas. But they get right back on top of it. And then quickly it's right back to the line. Looked like Zane got on top of it from Algonquin. Nice job right there. Now they come back to pass. Lambert goes there, wide side of the field. He was looking for Garrett Ranieri again of St. John's. That pass long and incomplete. That'll be number one going back to that previous fun recovery of Cyan Zhang from Algonquin. Right there trailing the play. Good job. The Joseph R. Mawinney chapter of the National Football Foundation would like to thank Chick-fil-A of Westboro, Marlboro, and Worcester for their gracious support of this annu eighth annual Central Mass All-Star Classic. A high snap to Lambert. He skies, brings it down, and then gets smothered on the play. Great job there defensively. It's Braden O'Leary of Clinton who breaks through the line and gets there to bust up the play on that one. He's on his way to Nichols College, Bill Thomas, in the fall. Yeah, smothered on the play, but he's lucky he didn't get drilled. He had to go high just to keep that ball from going over his head. Uh, slow developing there, but uh, got his wits about him and uh, turned it into something. Not much, but something. Looks like we're going to have a hit field goal. It is going to be a and field we are. We're gonna goal attempt. Field goal here. Let's get a little back uh, Back away. See the part that's going to bother me the most, Bill Thomas, is number 24 is going to take this field goal, and we don't have a 24 on our Central Mass roster. That's the part that's going to really irk me. LaRose will hold, snap the ball down. The kick is to the bar, and it is no good. Plenty of leg on that one, but unfortunately not able to split the uprights on that accord. So the shutout stands. About 90 seconds into this second quarter, it's mid-watch seven, central mass nothing. Midwatch will go left to right here in this second quarter action as they come out on offense after the failed field goal attempt. They'll have the ball first down and 10, their own 20 yard line going left to right. So that was a 30 yard field goal attempt. Yeah, it'd be nice if we could uh, identify, but uh, if he goes back and looks at him, he, he knows who he is. He'll see himself attempt that Absolutely. field goal. On and camp. it was a great attempt. It was. Uh, just plenty a of leg bit there. Of, uh, wide left, uh, just barely. But, yeah, you're right. It was it was true. It was up. It was clean looking. I uh, just drifted this way. And uh, my mention, left-footed kicker, too. Yes. You don't see too many of those. Bob LaRose organizes the squad for Central Mass. He's over there talking to his team as they try to get a plan together. Of course, just the seven points differentiating between these two teams. And Bill Thomas, it speaks to, of course, top to bottom, just how close divisions are across Midwatch and across Central Mass, and just how close the competition really is. When you bring them all together, you wouldn't know you had players from various divisions competing in this. No, and I think the kids have meshed very well. The coaching staffs have uh, blended the kids well, I think, and found the positions because, you know, you got kids that played uh, same positions, maybe their entire football career, and now being asked maybe to, to assume a little different role tonight. And uh, But the mix and the match in, the coaching, it all comes together. John Bedner Zarek of Murdoch out at the right guard position for the Midwatch All Stars. The snap and the give this time was inside on the carry from Clinton. That's Mark Moran on the carry. He makes the carry up the middle of the field. Sticking with the running game right now, the uh, Midwatch. Seniors are. Well, it certainly was effective, to uh, to say the least. Uh, and then you just pop out that opportunity with a little Encarnacion screen, pull, and all of a sudden you've got yourself the in. points you're looking for. All right, pull him in and beat him, beat him with speed. Now 
Shotgun snap and the give this time. Heading around end. It's Dylan Terra from Algonquin. He gets caught from behind, but not before he crosses the 25 to the 26 yard line. Try to get the number. I think it was three uh, out there on defense that tracked him down from the backside. We got a couple of threes there, so uh, good luck with that. But uh, we're going to have some help here in a minute, helping identify kids. And uh, we can start with that field goal kicker, Coach. We are number 28, out of the left-footed field goal kicker. We wanted to give him credit. But uh, welcome to the broadcast. Hey, Billy, Try again. Hey, Billy, how are you? I'm <laughs> doing fantastic, <laughs> Harold. Good to see you, and uh, just a great job uh, tonight. And uh, uh, I'll let you talk to Todd. He's got a lot, a lot to, I'm sure he wants to share with you. Back to pass. The throw into the boundary is incomplete. That was Kyle Arias of Hudson on the attempt. Well, as we welcome Harry Ogilvie of the uh, multiple number plan, uh, calling the play-by-play. -play. Uh, coach, can you help me out a little bit? Who's playing quarterback right now? Because we only have one number 80s from Clinton. That's Mark Moran, who we just saw on the carry. So that is Pemberton from Algonquin. He was actually a late add. If he's on this roster, on Divid District 3... Written in, that is Brendan Double. Pemberton from Algonquin. <laughs> Todd, you mean you don't have the most updated copy? I do. I didn't have a number of your own. I have them on. I have them on my sheet. I just don't have a number to go with them. So it's Brendan Pemberton. Well, that's good to know. See? How about the number 28, the left-footed field goal kicker for uh, that Central Mass? That is um, Hassan Lowry from Worcester South. Okay, there Perfect. we go. He was supposed to have jersey number 99, and the guy who ordered the jerseys is a real clown <laughs> <laughs> and screwed up. So he was supposed to be 99, and unfortunately, because I, I happened, um, I gave two, the same kid two jerseys, and this guy didn't get one. Jonathan Cano makes the fair catch at the 35-yard line. Coach, of course, we're giving you a hard time because we love you, but this is a great event. We've been talking all about you know, how exciting it is to get these teams together. You guys threw the little wrinkle in this year. Instead of north-south like we saw last year, you decided to mix and match it a little bit, and you put all the mid-watch league schools together, and then everybody else, we're calling it Central Mass, in the other pool. And it's created these fun you know, sort of mixes and matches. St. Paul, St. John, St. Bernard's, they're all on the same team together for nice Central Mass. You, know, and you get to mix those pieces together. And so it came up... Um one of our meetings, I just had been thinking about, like, I was wearing the north-south, was getting a little stale. So I wanted, you know, I always hear how favorite Bridwatch watch is and that. So I'm like, oh. So we decided that we were going to, you know, I came up with a suggestion. Why don't we go two versus three? Let's see who the big dogs are. Um, I put it out to all the coaches first just to ask them, like, what are your thoughts? Like, if you're dead set against it, then I won't do it. Sure. And all the coaches were pretty excited about it. They thought it was a great idea, including some of the athletic directors. LaRose on the carry there for Central Mass. Goes with that big group of blockers in front of him. And now here's Lambert on the snap. Take it to the middle of the field. That one will be plowed into the pile, maybe move themselves a little bit closer for third down. And short correction, Logan Quinn from Monty Tech on the, uh, the carry there for Central Mass. And, you know, I suppose there's so many pieces, Coach Ogilvy, to put this whole thing together. But the important part is obviously to get the support of the student athletes. And we've mentioned it a couple of times because you told me about it, just how great the turnout was for practice and just how excited these players were to get together as LaRose gets smothered in the backfield by Josh Cormier, who steps up from his linebacker spot. Yeah, the kids this year were outstanding um, in terms of getting paperwork back to me, corresponding with me, making the attendance at meetings. If they weren't going to make it, letting me know. Um, almost even during once the practice started, they did not have to tell me because I'm not one of their coaches. They would still kind of give me a little courtesy and say, hey, coach, we're not coming. Um, and so this, is, this was a real special group. I'm really, it's been a great, I'm very proud of these kids, the work ethic and everything that they put into play in this game. So it's Dan Hasselnari from South stands back to punt at his own 29-yard line. And, Coach, we saw you greet every single player from both teams and just talked a little bit about the community that is Central Mass football. And it seemed to me to be very important for you to get to greet every single player as they were introduced tonight. It's, I mean, this game started as, as with six of us as our baby, and I'm the last one standing. And uh, last year when we had the first one after COVID, I was extremely emotional at the meeting. And I, I didn't tear up, but I let some language fly, and I, I, play, I explained to the parents that this game just means a ton to me. Us being able to have double the amount of kids in Central Mass playing an all-star game, it's just special. 
and I appreciate the fact these kids could go to the beach right now. These kids could have gone, done graduation stuff. They could have gone and done, hung out with their friends because they're coming up to that last summer. And these boys all committed. And it, it's, it just means a lot. It's like they were committing to me. And, you know, this is what we get. And I'm grateful for all the help I have in this. Um, Tommy McCarthy is on the clock tonight as our treasurer. Jay is our president who happens to be at Polar Park tonight. You know, doing do, those baseball duties. He's doing his baseball duties. I think he scheduled this game on purpose that way. <laughs> <laughs> Welch back to pass, fakes the jump pass, tucks it himself around the right end, across the 25 to the 30-yard line, and he's cut down there across the 30 at the 31. And that was, who else once again? Angelo LaRose, who might be getting an early look for maybe one of the, uh, the most valuable players of this ball game. That young man is truly remarkable. Between his grades, obviously his football acumen, um, I've had a lot of conversations. His dad and I are good friends. I've had a lot of conversations with him around football and just life. And he's he's not a high school kid. He's he's an old soul. He's and I've never I've not seen many kids that are going to outwork Angelo. He's just a, he's fun to watch. Second down and three to go. Their own 32-yard line going left to right. Welch in the shotgun, set four receivers spread out wide. Keeps it himself. Initial contact, crossing the 32. Drives his legs forward, and Welch crosses the 35 to the 36-yard line. And he owes that a lot, Coach, to the blocking up front. He's been getting a lot of help with the blocking. They got, that old line up front, big Hudson Foster from Watch said He's wearing an Anna Maria helmet tonight, but Hud's, uh, I, first time I met him was this process, and he's a kid I would have loved to have coached. Just a great positive attitude and a work ethic in him. All these linemen up front are just, you know, they've got a couple of my guys up there, and I'm just proud of them, and I'm happy that they showed up and that they work hard. They've got uh, a couple of guys from Algonquin, a couple of guys from Air Shirley up front. It's nice to see the smaller schools kind of get a little bit of plug where in the old Shriners game they weren't getting a look. First and 10, their own 36-yard line at right hash, going left to right. Four receivers tightly bunched. To the he's left, he's oh, the he's double. I was going to say the double pump. Welsh decides not to go across the field. Coach, you saw the opening pop up there. That was Kyle Arias of Hudson that sort of leaked out there it on did. the left he side. Was, uh, saw that against, saw that in the film against me. So I, I was, <laughs> I kind of was looking at that from him. And um, you know, coach, just to expand on something you said pre-play, that you know, kids that uh, get together that don't normally get together might not have got a look in a typical All-Star game. You know, we're calling this an all-star game, but there are kids here that don't get recognition as true all-stars. They're not Telegram All-Americans. You know, they might not have a scholarship to go to the next level. Um, but this is an opportunity for them to show their skills and to play with kids that, uh, uh, depending on the levels, they might not have had a chance to compete against. And that's what we, when the coaches are nominating, we tell them, I tell them, if you've got a kid that's a great kid that's not getting all the plug and love, send them. Send them. And you, you speak to that, how the effort you've seen from some of these kids that we might not know about. Welch rolls left and throws. He's got Encarnacion at midfield, in and out of his hands, and incomplete. I bet you you won't see that ever happen again. Uh, <laughs> it, it was rare when you did, but that is a juggle and a drop for Encarnacion, and it's third down and ten for mid-watch. And Welch rolling out, got some great feet set there and had Encarnacion and just couldn't reel it in the end. Incomplete pass stop. It's the clock. 5.13 to play second quarter. Mid-watch with the 7-0 lead. Coach, does it surprise you in these All-Star games when the scores are a little bit lower or when the score tends to get away in the process? I expected this to be a low-scoring game. I knew both defenses were... It's so easy to put a defense in in a week, week and a half, where trying to get everybody to mesh on an offense is really hard. But the um, like the coaches do a good job. Oh, good pick up. An all-out blitz coming from the outside there. That was Griffin Metcalf of Leicester, but Welsh holds his spot, throws, and it is complete into the hands of Zach Wojanowski of Oakmont, who makes the catch into the boundary just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line, and it's a mid-watch first down. And, Coach, you said it. The blitz pickup on the outside was incredible because coming unabated was Griffin Metcalf. He, he was – it was uh, – the, the, the back did a nice job picking up on that. There I was footsteps there I from the backside. I didn't, I didn't think he was going to get there to that, and that was a nice pickup. Was that Makai? Indeed uh, it was. Wow. Right in front of the uh, mid-watch bench, too, all that action taking place. Newton now switches to the left side of the quarterback. Welch, three receivers in the formation, two set up to the left. 
And Newton is going to get the carry. Adjusts the ball nice in his down. right hand. Spins across midfield and steps out of bounds across the 47 at the 46-yard line. And that is Mackay Newton, formerly of Lemonster, now on his way to be a Ram of Framingham State. Five foot nine, 196 pounds. He'll look to continue their opportunity. And coach, of course, let's talk a little bit about the, you know, sort of the balance here. Coach Harry Ogilvy joining us here on RFM as we continue on this eighth annual All-Star Classic. You know, you guys aren't able to put this together without the generous support of so many pieces. And Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A was a huge, been a huge is one. a huge sponsor for us. Um, um, the kids did a nice job. Of, they've all bought their game jerseys. They get to keep them. That's why they get their names on them. Um, but Chick-fil-A is, put is putting through a nice chunk of change to help us out. They fed the both teams last night and the coaching staffs and didn't have to do that. But, you know, out of their kindness, we really appreciate the fact that they do do that, and they've done it over the last few years. Welch drives his legs forward and snuggles the football up to the central mass almost 40 yard line call it the uh, the 41 and very very close to the 40 and they'll give him the first down at that mark so it'll be a first and 10 for central mass and they will keep the drive moving on their way down the field coach if people are looking to get involved want to be involved here looking for of course the scholarship opportunities for the year ahead it's never too early to nope. start thinking about 2020 oh, absolutely if, the, if people want to get involved please uh, talk to your local coaches. Um, we're looking. We're always looking for them to get involved. Um, we want to get assistant coaches involved because when we go to our chapter meetings, there's usually six people. It's the same six people. And don't get me wrong. I I love it. I just want to get a total involvement in Central. We have 52 football playing schools in Central Mass. They did the scholar athlete this year, and I think they got 14 nominations. 12. It was 12 nominations this year. And that's fall. That's got to fall on us coaches. Like we got to do our job to promote our kids and our fam. Our you know and our players to get these things. We should have 52 well, people receiving you know, those. Absolutely. It kind of, we kind of see that response sometimes week to week with certain schools that uh, you know, are reluctant to share information. I'm sure that you probably run into that same roadblock sometimes. Um, it, get, you know, get, let's open up and uh, be more uh, user-friendly, I guess, and more... Uh, it only benefits uh, the student-athlete. Well, that's what I try to explain. Public like relations friendly, I guess, is the best way to put it, to bring attention to your school, any positivity you can. Right. I mean, this game, the in the scholar athlete. This isn't about me. It's not about Harold Ogilvy. It's not about Jay Cost. It's not about Tom Bingham. It's about John Q. Football player that for four years busted their hump in the classroom on the field. Throw them some love. And it's. I'm hoping more coaches. You know, I've seen an awful lot of coaches walking around tonight giving an awful lot of compliments. I saw them at the at the table. And I, I appreciate that. But and, uh, show me a compliment. Come get involved. Come coach one of these teams. This year, I was grateful. First time, Mark Allen, I, I talked to him at one of the meetings, and he goes, I'd love to. It was beautiful. Bobby LaRose, I, you know, Bobby did it last year as an assistant. He did, yes. Um, so I had to browbeat him a little bit to take <laughs> it. But um, he loves doing it. The South guys, every bo both coaching staffs have been outstanding. I've had the good fortune hitting both practices. I've really enjoyed it. Um, they're a lot of fun. We it's laugh a, a lot. It's just great to see the support. And, and, and one more aspect that you can't leave out is the fans have turned out tonight. In droves. I mean, you know, uh, I'm guessing at least a thousand. I'm sure it's, uh, you know, good for the scholarship fund and, uh, you know, selling some t shirts, but just having fun tonight on uh, Friday night, uh, some springtime football, and the fans are showing their appreciation, getting to, to see their kids out here one last time. And it's, I mean, I was, I had the good fortune, obviously, coaching Clinton. Um, my parents have been blasting it out on social media. Good friend Christy LaPerro, her son's number 66 putting it out does up a big thing for them today of each picture of each kid their name everything so it's been pretty awesome um you know i've saw jeff clarkson from oxford he's been he's been spreading it around with a shovel about this game so it's been it's just it's such a great night it, it really is one of my favorite nights pre-summer and to see these kids do it one and i don't get to see lemonster i don't get to see fitchburg i don't get to see any of these schools fourth down and Eight to go, and there's a flinch on the line. Never the way you want me to have to mention your name, but it looks like over the uh, the middle of the field there, that was Andrew LaPlume of South, I believe, that uh, the flinched on that one. 
And so it'll be a five-yard penalty. Still going to bring up fourth down. Fourth down and four now across the 35-yard line at the 34, middle of the field. Welch talking to Coach Allen over here on the sideline and continuing. 135 and counting down toward halftime here. Seven-nothing mid-watch on top of Central Mass. The eighth annual All-Star Classic here on RFM, organized by the Joseph R. Mawinney chapter of the National Football Foundation. Vice President Coach Harold Ogilvy joining us here for this second quarter action. Welch is back to pass. Gets a block from Newton. Throw oh over boy. the middle. And uh -oh. it is an interception. Uh -oh. Going back Come the on, other John. way with some room. Bouncing it to the outside there. It's Ben Wing. Wing gets caught and then angled out of bounds. Newton slowed him down. And the finish came from Oakmont. The finish on that tackle was Zach Wojanowski from Oakmont with the finish, but the interception on the play is the thing that stands out. It's Ben Wing of St. John's. Got himself an interception and a run back across midfield. Sets Central Mass up first and 10 at the 28-yard line going right to left. Yeah, interception in the middle of the field there. I'm not sure a uh, receiver might have fell down or uh, just uh, an errant pass, but uh, a lot of room up the sideline here. Some big blocks here at midfield and uh, great field position for the uh, Central Mass Stars. Lambert, shotgun set, three receivers here. Great scoring opportunity. Handoff goes up the middle of the field. Looked like Steven Fatok of Worcester Tech on the carry. And the, the detecting intensity is picking up a little bit, Coach, and, uh, and Todd, but uh, that change of possession kind of woke everybody up there. Love it. It's uh, good. It's football. This yeah, is... They're getting into it a little bit now, halftime, and I'm sure there will be some discussions uh, in the locker room. And, uh, you know, but uh, still got the... Half a minute here to go. Lambert with the snap, back to pass on second down and six. Swings a pass out, complete across the 25-yard line and down around the 22. And that's Rafferty Bosopen of St. John's who makes the catch going out there toward the boundary and the timeout spent. Stopping the clock as Central Mass attempts to push this one in to perhaps tie things up coming toward halftime. And Coach Ogilvy, before we let you go, I think the one more thing we, we can't like help but mention here, and I think people sort of lose sight of this because they think very maybe small scope, right? This is not just a Central Mass football organization. No. It's a part of a much larger National Football Foundation. It goes all the way down to the College Football Hall of Fame. There's a whole huge organization there that you are a part of here in Central Mass. We get uh, our coaches are given voting rights for the College Football Hall of Fame. Um, we have we are tied into both our coaches hall uh, college football hall of fame, state coaches. So we're we're a big group. Like we get a lot of coverage. Um, it's again, I, we got to do a better job as a chapter, though. We've got to get these younger coaches to, to know about what the, what the hell we're doing. Third down and four to go. Lambert bobbled the snap. Oh, he goes back, recovers, out. sets his feet, throws, end zone intercepted, that and that ball's coming back the other way. Looking for a block and a little bit of help through the middle of the field. I, I believe that's Wojanowski of Oakmont once again. On the, uh, I think it was that. Nope, check it. Number four. That's that Harvey like, Early yes, of Fitchburg. Yes. yes. <laughs> Harvey Early comes up with the interception in the end zone. Big play, throwing that uh, attempted score there as the half winds down. The smoke gray and brick red helmet there of <laughs> Fitchburg High School. Harvey Early gets on the board 14 seconds before halftime and stops a central mass scoring opportunity. But what a play there, a quarterback. Uh, who was that Lucas, uh, Luke Lambert there, yes, I it think, was. picking that f fumbled snap up and he getting the ball downfield. Unfortunately, an errant pass, but... Uh, Kept his wits about him and uh, got a look downfield, just unfortunately ended up in the wrong hands. Coach, what do you do here if you're if you're Central Mass? Of course, you know, this is, it's, it's, it's all in good fun, but conveniently somebody wants to win this game. And I can't imagine that Coach LaRose is going to, you know, go in going, well, 7 nothing. we're still in striking distance here. A whole nother crew is going to come out for the second half. You get that second wave that's going to come in and play. So what do you do here trying to build things up going into halftime? I'm, I'm old school, Todd. Right now, I'd go to a knee and be happy that we were up seven, <laughs> and let's go in and figure out what we got to do to get it to, to greater. But that's in an all-star game right now. If they, I'd love to see him come out with some sort of trickery, tomfoolery, something crazy. Last play of the uh, yeah. last play of the half here, right? Pull something out of the bag, right, Might as coach? Well, it, but have some fun with it. Like, Absolutely. I joke. But but having fun, and I want to go back to a previous play. You talked about Raffery Bosama from St. John's. We didn't see St. John's play anybody in Central Mass, and that kid is playing. 
you know, friends that their, their team was playing on the other side of the world, it felt like, uh, you know, in a whole different league all year. So we weren't sure if St. John's was going to want to take part in this. <laughs> they had actually reached out to Jay, well, and Jay's like, nice. I'm like, I, I, they're Central Mass. I, I know they don't play in Central Mass, but they're a Central Mass team. Pemberton back to pass. Finds him, Carnacion, complete the <laughs> hand drop. <laughs> it goes inside into the hands of Arias, and then he gets back Body dropped on the play, straight out of the old WWE, across the 25-yard line to the 26, and that is a very exciting and painful first down for Midwatch. You wired Jones. into the coaching staff there, uh, a coach? I mean, they like <laughs> right out of the play, the trick playbook. <laughs> and, and you, got, you know what? That one worked pretty well. Yeah, let's you try it again. With, you, you got to come one up more. with another one. <laughs> Five seconds oh, a left little, before yeah. halftime. Another hook and ladder a little further downfield maybe. Yeah? <laughs> Timeout taken by the mid-watch. Seven-nothing. Yes. The advantage coming here. Coach Harold Ogilvie, vice president still, right? Of the, uh, Joseph Armour when he shot I was the, the one National Football I couldn't get out of the chair fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you so much, Coach Ogilvie. It's our pleasure to be John, here. I appreciate thank you guys so much, being here. I look forward to many years of doing Thanks, this together. Coach, absolutely. We We're looking be, forward to uh, it. prouder to be part of this. And, uh, you know, it's just a, it's a great thing you do. Uh, eight or ten scholarships I know you gave out at yep. the banquet, but the recognition, uh, you know, and it's got countrywide recognition, uh, not just Central Mass, but uh, – Keep doing the job you're doing. I Absolutely. appreciate it. This Again, at the end of the day, it's about what I've got out in front of me, and these kids were gracious, and I'm proud of them. I, you know, Obviously, I'd love to see both teams win. It's not going to happen, but the kids won. They're in this game. They got one more shot. And happy early Father's Day, my friend. Thank you Enjoy so much. Yourself. I appreciate Thank that you. same to you. First down and 10. Pemberton back to pass. Scrambles, slips a tackle, now launches down the right sideline, jump ball, and Carnacion was passing through, as was Wignuski, and Damian Jones gets the breakup incomplete, and that brings us to halftime of this eighth annual Central Massachusetts All-Star Football Classic right here on RFM. Bill Thomas, what a first half of action. Very exciting. You know, the, the action we saw on the field, I think the score is not indicative of uh, what we saw on the field. The enthusiasm, uh, pretty good play, but like uh, Coach Ogley said, defense usually dominates in these situations. I think we saw that tonight. A couple of big plays that, uh, you know, opened our eyes. The, the long uh, catch and run by uh, Ricky and then a uh, little flea flicker, uh, hook and ladder play here to try to get something going at the end of the half. But uh, I expect a little regrouping by both teams, and maybe we might see the offense open things up a little bit here in the second half. Extended halftime here as both teams get into their huddle. We're going to step aside. Whether you're joining us live on RFM Audio on YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch on this Friday, June the 16th, and I will echo Coach Ogilvie, a happy early Father's Day to all the fathers out there uh, that are joining us tonight. And, of course, if you are joining us in delay for the full and complete video broadcast, which is available noon on Saturday. These same RFM platforms, YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. Join us for that coming up tomorrow as well. Halftime score here at Historic Doyle Field in Lemonster. It's the Midwatch All-Stars 7 and the Central Massachusetts All-Stars nothing. More to come. Stick and stay with us. Halftime here and we'll be back. You are listening to this high school football All-Star Classic right here on RFM. I'll never forget the day I decided to go out for the football team. Mr. Banks, the JV football coach and my history teacher, asked me to stay after class. I thought I was in trouble. He said, hey, Darius, have you thought about going out for football? I think you'd be great. Fact is, I never played football. Fact is, I never had anyone tell me I'd be great at something. So, with no experience at all, I signed up. And a week later, I padded up and was running drills on the field. I never was great, but playing high school sports was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I was accepted by my teammates, and I learned that when someone believes in you, you can believe in yourself. Encourage a student you know to take part in a high school sport. This message presented by the MIAA and the Massachusetts Secondary Schools Athletic Directors Association. Papa, why can't we telegraph while riding a horse? Son, there ain't no one to blame but Jeffro. He was riding old Betsy the Stallion, tip-tapping away at his telegraph, when blam, ran right into the side of the saloon. 
Well, if Jeffro can't do it, neither should you. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you out, because only you can prevent wildfires. Hey, Assistant Smokey Bear, call me Papa Bear, because I'm grilling up dinner. <laughs> do you get it? Yes, good job. So, what should I do with all these coals? Don't just toss them out. Put them in a metal container, because those embers can start a wildfire. I understand. The stakes are high. Ha, 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 ha. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Is there a student athlete at your school that deserves recognition? Someone who's constantly representing your school as a good citizen and should be acknowledged. Now is your chance to nominate a student athlete for the MIAA Student Athlete of the Month Award. This award is presented monthly to two student athletes who display excellence in the areas of academics, athletics, and community service. Students in grades 9 through 12 who attend MIAA member schools are eligible to receive the award. Visit the MIAA website at MIAA.net to nominate a student athlete today. The Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association, building the future through educational athletics. This is Bob Sosi, the voice of New England football for the best high school football action in North Central Mass, featuring our award-winning broadcast team of Todd Robbins, Bill Thomas, and Kate Robbins. Keep it right here. and the Ad Council. Is there a student athlete at your school that deserves recognition? Someone who's constantly representing your school as a good citizen and should be acknowledged. Now is your chance to nominate a student athlete for the MIAA Student Athlete of the Month Award. This award is presented monthly to two student athletes who display excellence in the areas of academics, athletics, and community service. Students in grades 9 through 12 who attend MIAA member schools are eligible to receive the award. Visit the MIAA website at MIAA.net to nominate a student athlete today. The Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association, building the future through educational athletics. This is Bob Sosi, the voice of New England football for the best high school football action in North Central Mass, featuring our award-winning broadcast team of Todd Robbins, Bill Thomas, and Kate Robbins. Keep it right here. Time winding down here on RFM Audio and in delay and just in time for the skies to open up here at Historic Doyle Field, the 8th Annual Central Massachusetts All-Star Classic organized by the Joseph R. Mawinney Chapter of the National Football Foundation exclusively here on RFM Audio as well as the full video broadcast in delay. Saturday noon, same RFM platforms, YouTube, Facebook Live and Twitch. Todd Robbins alongside Bill Thomas, Kate Robbins here as well. And the third quarter action as we get ready to get underway, Midwatch will receive from Central Mass with Midwatch up 7-0. On top of Central Mass, the kick is away, and away we go off the left foot of Daniel Hassanieri. And now the return, Encarnacion gets the field, cross the 30, 35 now go 40, he's got midfield, bounces to the outside right sideline, no one's going to catch him, Ricky Encarnacion down the sideline, 10, 5, end zone, it is another touchdown for the Midwatch All-Stars, and it's Ricky Encarnacion once again, and let the celebration ensue, a perfect strike thrown with a nice read on the boards there as well. I, I can see they definitely practiced that as well, but it's another Ricky Encarnacion touchdown. It's 13-0 Midwatch on top of Central Mass, and 15 seconds into the second half, Midwatch is up 
17 nothing, and it's another Ricky Encarnacion touchdown. Fortuitously, as this broadcast continues to grow, Bill Thomas with me as we mentioned moments ago, Coach Aaron Canterbury of Lemonster High School, Devin Gates, head coach from Lemonster, joining us as well. And because no broadcast would be complete, Osiris Lopez wandering about, maybe a future contestant in this game, but he has joined us on the broadcast as well. Alex Klein to attempt the point after. Kick is up and through. Back up the fields come the teams. 11.45 to play here in the third quarter. 14 nothing. So I did a great hold by Josh Cormier on that. Oh, yeah. I, I, I noticed that. Why wasn't he holding this year? It's the first I've ever seen him hold. So it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> he was, he was snapping up, during the season. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's amazing what you can uh, what you can find the opportunity for players to do. Obviously, this is a fantastic event to have it here at Doyle Field. Second year that it's been here. It's a growing situation uh, each and every year that they have run it. And, of course, this foundation supporting football here in central Massachusetts doesn't get much better than that. Oh, it, it's great. I mean, what a great event, great turnout tonight. Uh, I think the squads are bigger than we've seen in a while, too. I know I've, like, I helped coach last year for the, uh, the North, what was the North, North squad last year, and uh, you know, I think they got double the players right now, and there's a lot of talent on this football field right now. It's really nice to see. Indeed there is. Coach Canterbury, as you sort of are getting your, your first opportunity to see this All-Star Classic in the flash, oh, yeah. you were talking a little bit about sort of what you would do if you were either team. Run back the kickoff was not oh, that, one of them, but I won't tell anybody. That's, that's that. a great strategy. <laughs> 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 score, score right when you touch the ball is always a good strategy. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, you know, uh, Midwash has T.J. Welch, who uh, is a great quarterback, uh, running quarterback, and can really take over a game with his legs for sure. And I was saying, get a little read option for him and uh, keep the oh. keep the clock rolling. On the return here, it's Jonathan Miranda of Southbridge. He crosses the 25-yard line. He's cut down shy of the 30 at the 27 as. Central Mass takes over the football, 11.37 to play in the third quarter and a 14-0 lead for the Midwatch All-Stars. Osiris Lopez, Lemonster quarterback here, heading into sophomore year. And, uh, oh, this is sort of a, uh, a game for you to aspire towards. Seniors, of course, out here. But you're seeing a whole lot of your friends out there. And, of course, yep. difference makers here mm -hmm. on, the, uh, on the field tonight. What's it like standing up here and sort of getting a chance to take it all in? Well, I mean, you know, seeing all these guys play against each other, it's kind of fun to watch, watch them compete and stuff. Both teams are amazingly great. You know, they all have talent. I mean, I hope, I can't wait till I'm out here one day. We, uh, we would all say the same. Logan Quinn on the keeper there, taking it around and cross the 40 to the 42-yard line for mid, uh, excuse me, for Central Mass. First and 10 from the 42, going left to right. 11-22 and counting here in the third quarter. A 14-0 mid-watch lead. And here come the Central Mass All-Stars. It's Quinn again. Shotgun set. He'll keep it. The snap knee high, bounces it to the outside, back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a short gain on the play. They'll give him a gain of two. It'll be second down and eight at the 45. Coaches, you're sort of thinking strategically uh, about this situation. If you're down two scores, you're in a situation where you've probably offensively only got some vanilla options to of choose course. from. Yep. What do you end up doing? How do you sort of craft it together? How do you craft the comeback? Well, I, I, in, in my opinion, uh, I, I'd like to... I like the look that uh, we were, uh, well, Central Mass was getting when they were in the trip set. I thought there was some, uh, some confusion with the outside backers and the safeties. I would try to exploit that a little more, uh, get some points on the board, get some big chunk plays because yards are coming uh, hard to come by uh, right now. LaRose is back with Quinn. The snap, LaRose will get the carry. Take it out to the right of the formation, cross the 45 and down at the 46-yard line. Yeah, I, and Todd, I don't think you abandoned your strategy quite quite yet here, too. Obviously going to make up some chunk yardage and, and get some points on the board. But, um, you know, I, I think getting the ball to your athletes, whatever you got, you know, plays obviously in this type of game are going to be really simple. Uh, scheme will be mostly simple, but you really just got to rely on some of the athletes you have out there to try to make, uh, you know, try to chip away at this, uh, at this deficit. Third down, six to go for Central Mass. And, uh, Coach Devin Gates, you were involved in this game last year. Tell me, what's it like preparing a team where you're sort of all organizing over a matter of a couple of weeks together? It, it's tough. You know, it's, a lot of guys are still playing some spring sports. There's baseball going on. There's lacks going on. So any given day, you may be missing some key parts of you know, guys from practice. But 
you know, that's why you got to keep it simple. You let the kids just go out there, have fun, and play. And, you know, I think the more they have fun, they learn how to bond together and play, the, the better off they're going to be and the better experience they're going to have in this game. Josh Cormier explodes from his linebacker position to make the tackle on LaRose on that slow developing play. And Osiris Lopez, of course, that was one of your linebackers on the defensive side of the uh, of the football. He also played a late yep. back for you on the offensive side as well. What's it like seeing him out here tonight? It's funny. <laughs> it's funny. Watching He's got celebrate. a fun sense of humor, I can tell. Oh, yeah. Uh, Josh is always going to bring energy, you know, and you see that right here. He's excited after he plays. He's got the lime green cleats on. Great look, Josh. Great look. <laughs> Yeah, I, don't know, I can't tell if he's got socks on or not, but um, he's got, no. he got some white socks on. He does, okay. Some crew but you know, socks. Josh is always going to be an intense player, and you know he brings it to everything that he does, and you know you already see it tonight, making some you know big stops and not afraid to stick his nose in there. Quarterback change. They'll move to Lucas Lambert, Will Central Mass, on this fourth down and five opportunity. Back to pass. Swing the screen out. Pass is complete. Crossing the outside. It's Jaden Rodriguez of BVT crossing midfield. Cross the 45. Dropped and taken down around the 42-yard line. And it is enough for a Central Mass first down, and the drive continues. Yeah, Todd, I think plays like that are going to be good for a Central Mass right here. They're going to loosen up the box a little bit, try to get them outside, run, run, run in sideline to sideline a little bit. Look at they're pressing the tempo a little bit. Unfortunately, you got a player uh, down Kiki. for a minute here. Looks like it's Kiki. It's Brian. Yeah, slow to get up. Brian Aguilar of Lemonster was looking at the uh, the center spot there. Change for Central Mass as well. Ethan Bushy, the Aztec of Asabet, uh, was prepared to snap the football before the whistle comes to kill play well obviously there is no such thing as a football offseason i suppose i mean technically there is but at this point you just migrate away from uh your game season into now you're sort of getting ready you're in your prep mode here uh, spending a lot of time uh in the uh, in the weight room getting ready for action and of course this is the time of year that uh, that athletes who aren't competing in the spring and are sort of preparing themselves for the season to come do a lot of their best work absolutely it's uh you know games aren't won just on Friday nights, you know, games are won in preparation and that goes for life too. You prepare for everything and I think football's a great translation for that. And, you know, with kids not working out, they're not going to see the results. So we've had good turnout in the weight room and uh, guys are working hard. They're hitting the books. They're doing everything the right way. And that's what we're trying to have this program do. And uh, Coach Gates is doing a great job of uh, leading that. And Coach, of course, you're in there, of course, week in and week out. This is sort of the darkness, right? This is when uh, when things are sort of put together, when it's out of the limelight and not there under the lights on Friday night. Yeah, this is where the foundation is built. I mean, not only strength and conditioning, but also, you know, camaraderie, brotherhood, all that stuff that we preach, you know, that I think is a big hit right there. Indeed it oh, yeah. was. Wow. 51 on the tackle there was Tom Caputo of Shrewsbury with the hit Good there. Player. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, not afraid to level the boom there. That was Rodriguez once again on the carry. Jeez. Brings up a fourth down and long, fourth and about seven from the 40-yard line, going left to right, 7.53 and counting to play here in the third, still chasing two scores. Lambert backpedals, he'll roll, he'll look over the middle of the field, downfield, he finds, catch made, touchdown Central Mass. Wow. Right over the top there. He's open for a while too. Yeah, Lucas Friedman of Millbury makes the catch and into the end zone for six points and Cyrus, I saw you immediately recognize what was going on. What did you see downfield? Well, the safety came up on the fade over here, and um, the corner bit on the out, and the post was wide open from the jump. How fast is that decision that you have to make? How fast is the recognition point for the layman who's never played quarterback? Good, like, two, three seconds maybe. Coach, would you say yep. if that? <laughs> I'd say if that, yeah. I think uh, <laughs> one, of, one of the maybe. good things with Cyrus. Said maybe. Osiris does a good job of uh, extended plays, kind of like what we just saw right there, you know, a little evasion and keeping eyes downfield, which is huge because uh, if you're just looking where you're running, you're never going to make a big play downfield, and that was a great example of that. Yep. As the rain continues to fall here at Doyle Field, point after is good for Hassan Lowry of South. 7.43 to play here in the third. Score cut in half. It's mid-watch 14 and Central Mass 7. Great opportunity here to visit with the coaching staff from Lemonster High School as well as quarterback Osiris Lopez, head coach Devin Gates, and quarterbacks coach Aaron Canterbury. And I don't often get a chance to talk to the two of you at the same time. So uh, let, let's talk a little bit about this relationship. Uh, contrary to what it may have looked like, you all did not know each other prior Correct. to this year yep. and somehow forged this bond that looks like older brother, younger brother at this stage <laughs> of, uh, of the career. How did this all happen? Talk to me about what this was like. 
Well, I mean, I, I, I've coached uh, quarterbacks, and Osiris reminds me a lot of myself, just the way he approaches <laughs> the game. Not as far as skill set. Uh, he's a little, oh, sorry, coach. a lot further ahead than me. But, uh, <laughs> you know, just, uh, you know, this bravado that he carries, and we kind of hit it off right away. And, you know, when you, as a, as a coach, you know, you always want that um, student of the game, a young man who's going to come in and listen to everything you say and then apply it. And there were several examples last year, last season of, you know, Osiris and me working on uh, a few things during practice, and we see it translate directly to the game. And then, you know, getting on the headset after every, uh, every series, he knows what I'm going to say before I say it. I know what he's uh, going to say before he says it. Yep. And, uh, you know, uh, anyone wants to catch us in Fortnite duos, go ahead and holler at us. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really where the bond was formed. I was going to say, they really, really are brothers, <laughs> as, as it turns out. So after this kickoff, Cyrus, I want to hear from the student-athlete, and as the rain increases to a deluge here at Doyle Field, onside kick attempt here for Hal Sanyari, crosses the 45, touched it around the 49, and doesn't quite make the 10 yards necessary. So the ball will go into the hands of Midwatch, 7.39 to play here in the third, 14-7. Midwatch with the seven-point lead and the football. So obviously we heard the coaching perspective on that, yep. Osiris. What was it like on the playing side of things? Well, I mean, as soon as I came into this program, you know, I think as soon as me and Canterbury, Coach Canterbury met, I feel like we just clicked and had that bond automatically. You know, it felt like I've, I've known him for a while and like, you know, we finish each other's sandwiches, <laughs> as we like to say all the time. Yep. And I think, to be honest, I think that Fortnite, Fortnite actually really brought us together a lot. For sure. For sure. Pemberton at the quarterback spot. Newton with the Beautiful. carry. He'll take it up the A gap, cross midfield. He stood up around the 43, maybe the 44-yard line. Gain a couple on the play there for Mackay Stinson Newton 725 to play here in the third and all of a sudden it's the it's the clock killing mode coach you're sort of the third member of this group you had to see the pieces and make this all come together as head coach so as the maestro how did you see it <laughs> well I, I mean, I've, I've known Aaron for a long time I coached him at Fitchburg State and uh, you know just knowing his approach and you know in, in his his mentality and um, you know, how he doesn't get anything, it doesn't make him too high or too low, and knowing that, you know, Osiris is, uh, you know, kind of the same type of individual, and, you know, I, ju I just, I knew it was going to be a, a good relationship, and that was going to benefit the team, and, uh, you know, it, it didn't disappoint, and I think it continues to grow now, too, and, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's great to see, as someone who's coached quarterbacks and had that quarterback room before, I, I know what it's like, and I know how meaningful it is, and, you know, it's, from the outside looking in, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it, it's, it's special. A special bond indeed. Pemberton on that rollout takes it to the outside left down around the 44 yard line and as the rain continues to pick up here's the spot that I'm really noticing this is a hardy football crowd the thousand that Bill Thomas pointed out they've put up umbrellas they've put up a few hoods but nobody's gone anywhere. Does anybody find that to be amazing at this point? It's amazing at this point. <laughs> <laughs> as the rain continues to fall here at Doyle Field. Third down attempt back to pass. Swings the pass out completely Complete does Encarnacion, and the catch made there on that one. Shy of the line to gain for certain. Saw, saw a big play from that in the first half, from that same play. Uh, had a tough time uh, setting that edge and setting that block with the wide receiver. And a short loss on the play brings up a fourth down and 11 for Midwatch and a punting formation. Klein will come out, stand back at his own 37-yard line and a little late to the party, Damian Jones and company on return, but they will get in position. The snap, the punt is away, and Jones will make the catch around the 14-yard line. Damian yep. Jones is a fantastic oh, athlete. Fantastic Unbelievable. Athlete. Yeah, I, 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 I saw... Um, uh, his sophomore year, I'm sorry, Chuck, his junior year, I uh, was at his uh, Thanksgiving Day game. Uh, he's a buddy of mine, uh, coach of the opposing team. I tell you what, it was it was the Damon, Damon show, Damian show, no question. And it feels like he's on about the eight-year plan. Doesn't it feel like he's been around a very long time? <laughs> played a lot of snaps. He played a lot of snaps. <laughs> Absolutely. And head coach Devin Gates, how important is that? When you can get a freshman into the program, we might have one that's on this broadcast right now, but how important is it when you can get a freshman into the program and get them varsity experience from freshman year on? Oh, it, it, it's great, you know, especially when they compete at a high level like that, too. And, and uh, you know, it just does wonders for your program, and everybody starts to get confidence, and, and, you're, and you're playing together. And, you know, I just really feel that having that 
progress through their through their career with all that experience just trickles down to the kids that are underneath them too and it really builds a, a strong program i feel lambert rushed on that one hit as he throws pass falls incomplete and it brings up a second down and 10 to go like 55 came flying in there was that it might have it was either geo roman or cole austin i couldn't tell who actually was it geo roman so the ball bounces to the outside. That one is a catch complete on that one. Will bounce to the outside with control as Gabriel Espinoza of Baypath takes the ball up the left sideline. He's got a first down across the 30, shy of the 35 at about the 33-yard line. And it's a first down and 10 to go for Central Mass. 5.07 to play, third quarter, 14-7. The lead for Midwatch, and right now the momentum seemingly moving in the direction of Central Mass. Yeah, absolutely, Todd. You know, good stop on that last third down, good pursuit to the ball. Now they're carrying it over on offense. Uh, doing some good stuff right now. Carry goes straight up the middle of the field there. That was Tevin Mazik of St. Paul on the carry there, crossing the 30 and down around the 33 again. Short gain now. They're going to mark him back just a little bit. Gains two-ish on the play. Second down and eight. Yeah, nice hard tackle there by Logan Arce, too. Absolutely. There has been a serious Lemonster imprint on this team thus far, uh, mid-watch-wise. I think, of course, Coach, when you get in these situations, it's the compliment to your squad. Uh -oh, ball and Dina oh, Wills, ball. that's oh, a fumbled football ball. to the turf coming up with it. Wow. Ball. It is mid-watch football coming up with the bottom of the pile. It's Ryan Yates of Hudson comes up with the fumble recovery. Who caused that? I think it got a little too cute on hand that handoff, yeah. yeah. Wow. And you know, you saw um, you saw Central, uh, you know, hit a big play on that swing pass again, and just like they did the previous series, like Coach was saying, spread spread that out, get the ball out to the edge. It is raining sideways here at Historic <laughs> Doyle Field right now. 4:33 and counting here in the third, and this eighth annual Central Massachusetts All Star Classic continues to roll on. It's a first down and ten. Mid watch football. Welch back at the quarterback spot from Shrewsbury. Newton in the backfield with him. Three receivers out wide. The low snap. Welch takes it up. Brings it off left end. Cross the 25-yard line toward the 20 before he's finally stopped up there with a gain of about seven, maybe eight on the play. It looks like a second down and about two. And if it's possible, it's raining even harder. Osiris Lopez joining us here on the broadcast. When you are in these kind of situations, adverse conditions, we'll call them, yep. how much more difficult does an already difficult game get? I mean, the ball gets very wet, even though, like, you, we try our hardest to keep it dry, to throw the ball. But if that, I mean, if that doesn't work, I mean, we'll just go to the run game. Seems like that's what Midwatch is doing here right now. Indeed, as Welch takes the snap, bounces it to the outside left wow. again, steps across the 20, shucks the defender, across the 15 of the 14-yard line. And it is another first down for Midwatch. Yeah, Todd, I feel like TJ Welsh is made for the situation Absolutely. right here, right? He's you know, you got, yep. you basically got an extra running back in there, so you got an extra blocker in the backfield. The kid is tough as nails, and he's you know, just taking it, moving forward. And you know, that's what Shrewsbury did all year long with him, too. And you know, it's a tough thing to stop. I mean, they really did a great job against us. And uh, you know, they're, I think you know, they're in a good situation with the conditions the way they are, trying to get it in, in 14's hands here. That's a, good, that's a good strategy. And the rain, rain, rain comes down, down, down. 325 and counting to play here in the third. Welch, the low snap, fielded, give it to Newton. Newton takes it to the outside. He'll drive his legs toward the line of scrimmage. Maybe a short loss on the play to no gain at best bat. And it'll bring up a second down and 10 to go. And it is raining even harder and heading toward our press box location here as uh, the rain continues to fall. My, oh my, oh my. Does this keep getting worse or is it me? Jeez. My. <laughs> Thank you, Coach Canterbury. Going to try to keep this broadcast going as the rain continues to come down. If you're watching us in delay on video, this has got to look just as bad Ooh. as it sounds as Welch just gets buried on that one on the play. Looked like 54. Was that Adam Laguerre of Abby Kelly, I believe, on the play? Two and a half minutes in counting to play here in the third, and it's a gather two of every animal time of situation here. 14-7, 222 and counting to play here in the third. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've seen a lot of things. Uh, I don't know that I've seen a high school football game. 
under these kinds of conditions in a That's very, crazy. very long time. I feel like we're in that Forrest Gump scene, you know? <laughs> pretty soon it's going to be coming from straight underneath us, you know? Oh, my. <laughs> Taking a look at the radar, Kate Robbins has just pulled it up. It is a very yellow cell that is running over the top of Doyle Field right now as we go under the two-minute mark, 152 and counting to play here in oh, the loose. third. Maybe a loose football. That one may have gone to the bottom of the pile. Welch comes up with it, still for mid-watch. A loss further on the play. It's going to be fourth down and longer coming here. That did, by the way, drive the fans a little bit. Osiris Lopez, thank you so much for joining us. Thank Have you, fun so. in your summer camp. I will and uh, sure. stay dry if you can between here I'm, and the car. I'm going to try. This is I'm not the try. opportune time to leave. But <laughs> we'll see you later. I hit no. you up for some duos thank later, Thank you. Thanks, okay. Osiris Lopez. You, here on the, uh, on the broadcast with us here tonight on RFM. Always great to get an opportunity to talk to student athletes and see them sort of in a, in a different light. Uh, obviously, you guys get to see sort of that personality. We see them in a helmet and pads and see the production. So it's yeah, fun to get sure. to see the all-around student. Absolutely. Uh, they're all, you know, they all have their own personalities, and that's the greatest thing about coaching is getting to know all of them and, you know, uh, seeing what uh, gets them ticking and uh, how they're feeling about different things and just developing that relationship. As the third quarter winds down, why not a field goal attempt? Klein, middle of the field, drives this one toward the bar and splits the uprights. Wow. That was what, 37? What a kick. 37 yarder in the rain. 42 seconds left here in the third quarter, and Midwatch adds to the lead. It's 17-7, and some kicks bring rain. That one seemed to extinguish it as the rain has started to die down a little bit here at Doyle Field. Wow. Another great hold by Josh Corner. <laughs> yes, I mean, who knew? Who uh, I was going to say, if only so these things, you know, if only you knew at that moment in time. That was sort of the key to the special teams. You know, Todd, in, in, the, in the beginning of the season, we always go like, you know, we've been was held, ever held before, or kicked before. You know, and I, and I can't recall Josh ever going to the hold of Pat. Right? You being, you, Coach Kennedy, you coached the hold. Right, right, correct. I remember that ever happening. <laughs> no, Josh was always snapping, so yeah, Josh was our true. long snapper, so. Uh, it was uh, Josh and Tony Salvatelli uh, <laughs> sharing yes. the long seven rolls. Yeah. Shout out to Tony Sa Salvatelli. No, uh, no yeah. question about that. Had a phenomenal baseball yes, season. Did. Onto the Legion season. Yeah. American Legion baseball right here on RFM this summer. A few more games coming up here, June 27th. Next Legion action here. It'll be post 151 hosting Framingham at McLaughlin Park. We'll have that action for you here on RFM. David Prouty kid. Yes, right indeed. Is Return it bounces it to the outside. That's actually very helpful as Julian Kondranowicz, one of four number ones on the <laughs> yes. uh, Central Mass squad, bounces that one to the outside, cross the 35 and toward the 40-yard line. 33 seconds left here in this third quarter. 17-7 is our score, and the rain has stopped, sort of, here at <laughs> Doyle Field. It's, it's died down to a, a strong mist. Uh, but you wouldn't know it here on Press Row. Uh, what is the deal on electrical and, wi and water? How does that all pan out? Uh, not, yeah, a, not a good combo. No, no, I don't believe it is. Combo. But the broadcast is still with you. That's the important part of this one. LaRose gets the direct snap. He'll bounce it to the left of the formation, cross the 35, and take it down shy of a 40 at the 39-yard line. So now sort of things turn back in the other direction for Central Mass. They're now falling back to a 10-point deficit, and they've got to try to build their way back into this ball game Absolutely. in somewhat adverse conditions. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be tough for them. Um, you know, I, I got like Coach uh, Gates was saying that that plan's a good move. Like uh, spread it out a little bit uh, with the wet uh, with the wet uh, conditions, it might be a little tough. But they're in that set. Uh, they had this set first uh, one of the series in the first half. Moved the ball fairly well, and then uh, uh, I'm sorry, Midwatch did a good job plugging it up, and uh, kid bounced, and then Josh Cormier made that tackle to stop the drive, but they were moving the ball when they can keep it in the middle in this uh, in this set. We'll see if they can do that now. And the third quarter deluge comes to a close. Three quarters complete, eighth annual, annual Central Mass All-Star Classic. Midwatch on top of the Central Mass All-Star, 17-7 through three quarters. The team's change ends, the all-important fourth and final quarter of this All-Star Classic, organized by the Joseph R. Mawinney chapter of the National Football Foundation right here in Central Mass as the teams prepare to change ends before we let our guests head on their merry way to enjoy the uh, the end of this one. 
as you sort of give us a quick preview here of the you know the summer ahead, more more weight room time, and then it's on into fall football and the return of Coach's Corner, which is always exciting. Coach and I are spending some time together on Monday nights. Coach, uh, the season is is to come. A Division One schedule is forthcoming. A, a lot of fun ahead in the uh, in the fall. Yeah, we're excited. We've got a, you know, a full summer ahead of us here. Not only do we have the weight room, uh, we also have seven on sevens that we do too. That uh, you know that are really I think critical for us to you know learn our coverages, learn our pass plays, uh, and, and just kind of build some chemistry with our guys too. Um, we'll have a camp coming up toward you know right before the end of the se- right before the season starts, and uh, you know then we're off and running. You know, a tough schedule this year. We added some uh, some tough opponents. I'll, you know, talk about after this player here. Nice Rose, yeah, that. the snap and the handoff to Ben Wing, who bounces it around then to the outside. Midfield, 40, and then angled out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Now they're going to mark him back a little bit to the 41 will be the, uh, the spot there for Central Mass. But it is a first down to matriculate the football. Yeah, uh, Ben Wing, good, strong running back, too. Just yes, to indeed. I believe he's going to WPI. Um, but it's that, on know, these notes somewhere. No, no, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> if I did, if I got that so wrong, notes. forgive me. <laughs> um, but you know, schedule coming up this uh, you know this season. We got St. John's opening up here. Uh, we got uh, Westford Academy. We're going to travel to. We got uh, North Attleboro that's coming here, and then we got Peabody that's coming here. So, uh, so some tough out of conference, out of dish, you know, out of uh, region opponents for us. And how does, of course, the move from Division Two to Division One? Uh, how does that landscape change? Obviously, it's larger schools, more student athletes to pick from. What's the Division One landscape looked like from afar that you are now going to be joining? Well, I mean, there's, it, it's tough because Division Two, I, I felt last year, was the toughest division in the state. You know, if we were in Division One, we would have been a nine seed instead of an 11 seed in, in Division Two. So, um, you know, that doesn't take away from the quality of Division One because there's some really, 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 you know, so obviously some great quality football yeah. programs there. Roman loses his helmet and misses the tackle, but wrapping it around end, it's Quinn keeping himself across the 40 to the 38 yard lot. No, but I think you're going to see some more, you know, traditional powers in the state. You know, you got your Everett's, you got your St. John's preps, you got, you know, St. John's Shrewsbury, Zavarian. Um, you know, you got some some big schools that have, you know, have some great traditions. So I think being back, and I think Lumberster belongs in that group. So I, I think being back there, you know, does it make a big difference in terms of? You know, where you end up, up you know, on the, on, you know, does it make a huge difference on where you end up on the playoff bracket? You know, I, I don't know. But, you know, the, you know, I just feel that setting for us. You know, we belong in that group. Lambert back to pass. Launches down the right side of the field. Jump ball, and it is an interception. Football going the other way. Midwatch has got the ball back. And for the second time tonight, it's Dom Vinchula with the interception from Shrewsbury High School. He's got two interceptions in this All-Star Classic tonight. Shrewsbury showing out today. Shrewsbury having a great game. And a huge colonial cheering section joining us as well uh, and thrilled with uh, with that performance. Lemonster High School head coach Devin Gates Quarterbacks coach Aaron Canterbury. It's, it's a, a pleasure. pleasure to get you guys on the broadcast. I'd say we do it more often. <laughs> you have busy. a different job. A yeah, thanks, but that's all right. We, <laughs> that's we, great. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks for having us. Thank you fun. so much. Great to, great to have you guys right. here. Take care. See you later. Broadcast continues here as we move to the fourth quarter. 10 24 to play. 17 7. The lead for Midwatch, and they've got the football back and the lead. I'm not exactly sure what the movie line is, but I, I believe it's something effective. What's the word on, on the electrical shorting out <laughs> under not, these not circumstances? <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, Kate Robbins here on, on site as well. Kate, Johnny on the spot with the weather forecast and other things as well. Can't we get out of the parking lot. Couldn't go home, <laughs> so I decided to come back. Well, Patrick seems to have uh, settled down, so we're, we're back He's to action Uncle here. Billy. He's fine now. He's doing a little camera operation. 10-14 and counting to play here in the fourth. 17-7, the lead for Midwatch. Kate, you've been Hi. sort of observing things that have been going on here today. We've had to. a lot of firsts on this broadcast. Um, but uh, beyond that, what have you seen tonight on another phenomenal night other than, of course, that passing shower? <laughs> passing shower, <laughs> passing deluge. Yeah. 
Uh, I've been I, I've actually been fairly impressed with the offense. I know that um, Coach Ogilvy discussed it previously. You discussed it previously. Usually, when you have these type of All Star matchups, defense wins the day. And we've seen some electric offense from from time to time, especially in the passing game. It's been phenomenal to see. Huge hit though there in the backfield for Central Mass. Is that Newton in the backfield Newton, yeah, for the Midwatch? Continuing to he move forward. He's now angled back, out of bounds. Driven back about six yards, but he got there was an initial hit in the backfield that just absolutely walloped him backward. He was able to stay on his feet, but then moved laterally to his left, so you're going to go far side. So it's going to be a, officially a loss of about five on the play for the Midwatch. So it'll be third down and 13 to go now. The clutch play, by the way, of this broadcast might have been Coach Canterbury with the umbrella here on the uh, on know? the broadcast. Um, might be the only reason the equipment is still functioning <laughs> at this moment in time. It's a little bit of everything kind tonight. If you're joining us in delay, it is Friday, June the 16th here on RFM. Great to have you along with us on the audio side here live tonight and in delay, our complete video broadcast. Hope you're enjoying reliving this one. Brendan Pepperton back at the quarterback spot for Midwatch. Oh. Back to pass in his own end zone and almost intercepted for a touchdown. That was close. It was either Israel Feebles or Noah Barrera, either North or South High School, both wear white helmets, so makes life a little bit more difficult in that sense, but almost made the interception in the end zone for a touchdown. Yeah, he would have only had to have taken two steps, and he would have been... It was, yeah, it was Peter. Noah Barrera of South with the almost interception. 8.34 to play here in the fourth quarter, and that would have brought the Central Mass All-Stars right back into this Certainly one. Certainly would have. That would have made it a three-point game. And then, once again, we're talking about special teams being the difference maker. <laughs> I know. Thus far, who would have thunk it? Special teams, even in an All-Star game. Low snap, fielded out of his own end zone by Klein. He punts down, field cross the 30 to the 33, and Damian Jones is going to take it in great field position for Central Mass. The tough part about these punt rules, of course, it's a safety thing that they're, they're putting in place here, is that Jones, I would have loved to have seen him on this half of the field, be able to open up and take it in, potentially, for the Central Mass All-Stars. 8.28. To play here in quarter four, 17-7, Midwatch on top of Central Mass, but Central Mass in great field position, looking to drive a score home and close this to three points. How are you on names? Wet. Okay. Logan Quinn, the quarterback, Quitter. fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, bounces it to the outside left, gets another block, works his way to the outside, past the numbers, cross the 20, then the 15, and angled out of bounds at the 14-yard line. It is a first down on the legs of Logan Quinn, the quarterback from Monty Tech, who's having a phenomenal night on his possessions offensively. Quinn is on his way to the workforce. 5'9", 190 pounds. He'll be, I'm assuming, taking up his trade. Don't have that information from here from Monty Tech. Yeah, vocational Technical High School. Says he is joining the workforce, so Love hopefully it. going to work with his skills found in vocational technical education. Quinn, the bobbled snap. This one's on the ground. He scampers to the bottom of the pile. And he will keep the football for Central Mass. Gio Roman tried to get to it and just couldn't quite do it. He's that been everywhere. He has been everywhere. I think your son's misbehaving. <laughs> he has a, a real affinity for the microphones on headsets, among other things. He has an affinity for being overtired, and there's too much to miss. <laughs> well, there is a lot going on here at Doyle Field tonight. I can understand his feelings. Instead, he's just going to be upset. Second and 11, Jones gets the handoff, bounces to the outside, and it's Roman again with the tackle. My, oh my, Gio Roman right on top once again to make that play. 7.25 and counting to play here in a... Steady moving fourth quarter of action. Bill Thomas has been on a multitude of assignment and was kind enough to even loan out his headset uh, <laughs> as well. And Bill Thomas, welcome back. You've been observing this second half and it, an interesting second half it has developed into. Yeah, it's been a very emotional second half here, in my opinion. Uh, some adjustments made on both sides. Uh, the rain definitely didn't uh, hamper the action. It might have uh, actually picked it up a little bit, but uh, things have calmed down now. And... Uh, Central Mass trying to get back in this game. Lambert with the clap. 
Steps up in the pocket. Now he's got a tuck and run. Cormier tries to bring him down. He trips him up, crossing the 10 and angled out of bounds at the 9. Save the touchdown there, but it's going to be close for a first down here. I wonder if they'll take the time for a measurement. And it looks like he's across the 10 at the 9. It's fourth down. Fourth down, about four to go. And Central Mass will spend a timeout, stop the clock, six and a half minute mark here of the fourth quarter, chasing 10. Wrong, wrong yard marker for me. He's still got five to go. No, no matter what, Bill Thomas, uh, fourth down in an Gotta all-star go game, uh, th they ain't coming up for measurement. Come up with a... <laughs> That's called <laughs> guesstimation. Well, and, uh, I think just kind of give him a little time. You know, the officials kind of build in a timeout there. It's also known as guesstimation. <laughs> hey, this has been a phenomenal officiating crew. First of all, shout out to having more officials on the field. Uh, just leads generally to better coverage, but of course we know the shortage of officials uh, in all sports. Uh, you know, plagues football as it does every other sport, but this has been a phenomenal crew showcased here at this All-Star Classic, running more of a collegiate style officiating crew with both the three officials across the line, also the three officials downfield as well, improves the coverage. And it's another field goal opportunity here on fourth down and four. Daniel Halsonary missed the first one by just a shade. The jumping jacks on the defensive side. Halsonary angled to the bar and splits the uprights. And back up field come the teams. 6.24 to play in the fourth quarter. It's a one-score ball game. It's mid-watch 17 and Central Mass 10. How the plot thickens. Nice job right there. Turns into a one-score game, a one-big play game. And uh, a lot of football left to be played here tonight, Todd and Kate. And, you know, all-star games can go any of a number of directions, right? They can be low-scoring affairs. They could be high-scoring affairs. They could be sort of uh, maybe a bit confused or, you know, I mean, the Pro Bowl has penalties all the time. The former edition of the Pro Bowl had penalties all the time because players didn't know snap counts. They weren't familiar with quarterbacks. To see these two teams of all-stars mesh so well together speak so highly about the dedication of the student athletes who came out to prepare themselves to work with their teammates who they don't go to school with absolutely you know and, and you really hit the nail on the head there it's about the dedication paying attention to detail and let's give the coaches some credit too you know a lot of uh, football is based on timing sure and snap counts and, and you know reads and uh all in all i think uh, up and down the rosters on both sides of the, of the field uh Kids have done a great job. The penalties have been kept to a minimum. Officials done a good job keeping their, their flags in their pockets. I don't think we've seen a holding call all night, nope. but I should have said that. Just Way a hand. It, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll, a couple, a couple of shortly, procedure yeah, and motions, but uh, for the most part, uh, the play's been pretty clean and straightforward, and uh, it's been fast-paced. Whistle. Yes, indeed. Hassan Liari with that left-footed onside kick attempt. It is fielded up fourth with some room. This is Trevor Sear up the middle of the field, recovers the onside kick and runs it back across the 20 and down toward the 15-yard line. What a return for the up man. Thank Picked you very that much. Up. <laughs> Bolted right out of the pack with that. Caught the cameraman a little off guard, but he caught up to him downfield, but... Uh, Nice job right there, not just settling for midfield field position, but let's really move the ball, and he took advantage of that. Let's put that into the category of this is an all-star game timing-wise, because mm -hmm. there was the play, and then everybody looked around at each other like, is this a live ball? Can <laughs> I play happened? this? Yeah, exactly. Yep, I sure can, and up the middle of the field went Sear, but he's got himself and his Clinton High School team on the board, so to speak, as they get <laughs> mentioned here. Great job by Sear. First down and 10 for Midwatch. Ball at the central mass, 19-yard line. The snap to T.J. Welch of Shrewsbury. Bounces it to the outside left, and Welch fights his way toward the 16, maybe the 15-yard line. Gain of three, maybe four on the play. It'll bring up second down. Yeah, and I don't think it's going to be rocket science for uh, Midwatch here. Uh, you know, you got to play like T.J. Welch and... Uh, Coming over here, talk to the coaching staff, but uh, I think you ride him right down the field here and keep the ball in his hands. And uh, you got a wet football out there, but let's cash in on this great field position. Kate, you were with us here, but weren't directly mm. able to be on the broadcast with us at that time. But how about your thoughts on Osiris Lopez? 
just who, how he's matured. I feel like he's matured 10 years in a matter of months. Mm. Uh, he's hit a growth spurt. He's now way towering over me. He was just towering over me in the fall of his freshman year as Newton gets the carry here for the mid-watch. Pounds his way forward, cross the 10, and battles his way to the 6 and then the 5. And it is a first down and goal to go for mid-watch. Well, when we saw him in the fall when he was an, an incoming freshman, you always have this thought of what a freshman is going to look like. And when you hear, oh, there's going to be a freshman starting quarterback on varsity, kind of like, well, what is it that I'm about to witness or, or see as, as, a, as a human being here? And I was wildly impressed just with his physicality and his physique as – as a freshman in high school. And so no surprise to me, as I'm sure not a surprise to Billy or Todd, that obviously that physical maturation clearly starting to, to continue and he doesn't look like a, a rising sophomore either. But what's most impressive about him is his demeanor, the way that he carries himself. Welch, the shotgun snap, gets the block, bounces to the outside and into the end zone for another mid-watch touchdown. Right, TJ, right in the end zone. But Kate, you finish up that thought there because yeah, I we're think, seeing, uh, we're like I said, the, the most important here develop right in front of our mm -hmm. eyes. In the most impressive aspects of him, number one, coachability. It's clear he and Coach Canterbury, um, incredibly close. You can't get that close to your coach if you don't listen to that's them. Correct. So that's that's been lovely to see that that ability. And he has a high football IQ. You just talk to him, and you can just tell. That's not what a regular freshman sounds like relative to their football IQ and being able to read defenses. Well, he he witnessed a broken play up here, and Todd says, well, what do you see? Well, I saw the play break down as the quarterback uh, broke containment. The safety came up, and then the read was there for the yep. test. Like, who, who are we talking to here? You know, not at 15-year-old fresh, you know, sophomore, but an on-field coach. Klein's point after rings the upright and back up field come the teams. 4.43 to play in this fourth quarter. It's mid-watch 23 and Central Mass 10. And to your point, I mean, this is that special type of student athlete. You know, the, the once in a generation that maybe you see with the opportunity. I mean, if you follow Osiris Lopez on Twitter, and we do here at RFM, and you look at the places where he's having an opportunity to go to camp and get looked at, I mean, he got his first Power 5 offer, Boston College offered him prior to his sophomore year. That tells you the, the growth you they're seeing in camp. He's been to my alma mater, Syracuse University, and other places as well. Um, he's trip got, down south. Yeah, it's a trip uh, to, to Rutgers and then, then Vanderbilt to follow. I mean, uh, I mean, these are major, major, major schools. And Kate, I'll give you a crack at this oh, one. Good. How many times do we hear that, you know, if you live in the Northeast, you can't get a major Division One offer or you're not going to get that Division One offer opportunity in football or basketball or those things because you just can't compete with a Florida athlete or a Texas athlete or a California athlete. I say phooey mm -hmm. and my exhibit A is Osiris Lopez. I would think I, I think you're right. I think the the old adage is if you're good enough they'll find you. Um, and so we've seen, you know, in various sports, we've seen student athletes. I mean, we have m multiple student athletes right now from the football ranks of Central Massachusetts that are in the NFL. You know, so it's it's not as if this is the black hole of of, of football athletics, and and we have other athletes um, that that are that are playing at incredibly high levels. Are there as many eyes on the student athletes in the Northeast? No, there aren't. Um, but are there eyes up here trying to find people? Absolutely. If you are good enough, they will find you. If in this day, and, and, uh, I mean, look at what Belichick did for you know finding hitting gems. But in this day and age of everybody sees everything and everything's documented and on film, you're not going to hide a kid. And if you have talent, you're not going to hide. People are going to find you. And I think we're going to find that this fall. The, the crowds are going to come out, and more than crowds, there's going to be eyes here that we don't even know about that are going to be watching him. And that type of talent-rich area, once you are seen as a fertile ground, the attention increases that much more. Snap difficulties. Lambert kicking the ball all over the field, still loose, going backward across the 20 from left to right, and out of bounds around the 18-yard line, and Central Mass still has the football. Clock stopped with the loose ball out of bounds. 4.29 to play in the fourth. 23-10 is mid-watch's lead, and right now it's time 
time to get going if you are from Central Mass. And I mean, this is, of course, where I, I get my moment to say it, it, to Kate's point. If you are good enough, they will find you. It doesn't matter what school you go to. It doesn't matter where you live. There's no special school that gets you more or better off. Are there schools, certainly, that produce, you know, football factory type schools out there? Of course there are. They exist. If they didn't exist, we wouldn't know about them. But to say that, there have been plenty of opportunities and athletes that have gotten their chance, and Osiris Lopez and others here in Central Mass will get their chance as the sling downfield from Lambert, the full extension, and the catch made by Rafferty Botsopen from St. John's, and it's a huge Central Mass first down to the mid-watch 36-yard line. What a play on the full extension. Great play, just a go patting down the sideline, hit him in stride, full extension, and... Uh, that's the way to move the chains when you're in a deep hole. And that's the type of play that Central Mass All-Stars needed. Lambert with the snap. Roll out to his left. And he is being pursued. Two defenders collide. He stays on his feet across the 30 to the 29-yard line. And he got yardage there. And two defenders, Josh Cormier being one. And also slow to get up there. Looked like three. Was that Will Vogel of uh, Groton Dunstable yeah. who, uh, who collided with him there? Cleaned each other off the tackle. Yes, there. they did. Yeah, it is Vogel. I was a little slower to get up, but heading back to the huddle. 120 and counting to play here in the fourth quarter, and Central Mass needs a scoring opportunity here. Time, that's a timeout. Oh, clock that's time out. Sorry, thank you. I, I appreciate about that. Four minutes left. Somewhere I was about gonna, there. You know, those <laughs> clock <laughs> operators get me <laughs> every time Mike with that got timeout me, clock. Uh, more than once last you, year. You look up, it. and there's yeah. a different time. Oh, you didn't shut the clock off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the sheer number of times we hear people <laughs> scream at that. With the clock operator, Mike, to my left, yeah. Tom, uh, Tom McCarthy, uh, longtime time. official here in Central Mass. Now, Father Time here at Doyle Father Field time. tonight, <laughs> uh, as the other uh, case may be. 23 10. Lead for midwatch. Yeah, Great. 357. Three Thank you. 357 left here in the fourth. 23 10. Midwatch's lead. And of course, this is a moment where if you are a Central Mass All-Star, you need a score on this drive. Lambert back to pass, scampers to his right, launches toward the right corner of the end zone, jump ball, catch is made, and it is a Central Mass touchdown. A huge catch made, and their bench empties and erupts in celebration down in that far corner. Check your replay to get the number of the guy who made the catch because he got absolutely swarmed. The important note, 3.48 to play in the fourth quarter. It's 23-16 and counting. What a moment. Must be right there. Let's see, right there. That play, I think it's two, Todd. Is it two? It's got a two on, on one side of it. Well, good news, there's only three of those. With two with a white helmet. Two with a white helmet. All right, well, let's see then. Let's consult the uh, the list here. That is either Michael Corentang of South or Marin Brown of North. Uxbridge is wearing a different helmet. So no, it is, it's it got is, a North. And it is big North. End, big end on the helmet. So that be North? Marin Brown from North with the catch. I believe that's him. And he has brought Central back into this one. Hassanieri to attempt the point after. The ball down the left-footed kicker. Drives this one through and back up field come the teams. 3.48 to play in the fourth quarter. Central Mass handled their business. 23-17 as the comeback begins. They'll need a defensive stop and another offensive possession to get themselves back into this one. And, of course, if you are on the midwatch side of the ledger, Kate, all of a sudden, you've had a seemingly, I won't say easy going, but you have felt in command and in control as everything was going your way. Now, all of a sudden, in the latter stages of this one, things aren't going so well if you're on the midwatch side. I mean, anybody who was aware of what was going to be coming in this game before they got here, everybody said this was going to be a good game. And it is a close one. And the nice part is, is that offense has been able to prevail. It's so difficult. We cannot express to you how difficult it is for an entire offense on a football field to be able to click enough to make plays. So it's been uh, absolutely entertaining with 23-17. And that's a lot of offense for an all-star game. Indeed it is. Far outscored and outpaced last year's seventh edition of this Central Mass All-Star Classic. Watch the onside here. Which side's it going to go? 
Halsonieri, ball back on the tee, 40 yard line at our right. The onside pop, the leap, the field made by one of the up men, also from Clinton. That's Mark Moran who jumps to make the catch. Falls back across his 45 to the 44 yard line. Midwatch football, 346 to play here in the fourth, 23 17. And now, of course, if you were Midwatch, you were in a little bit of a protect mode, trying to survive through that weather. Now you're almost having to think about we got to go on the attack here a little bit. At the very least, we got to start chewing up some clock. Yeah, and now. Uh Looks like uh, Central has one timeout on the scoreboard, if that's accurate. But uh, we'll have to see how the clock, uh, how the clock affects the, the play call in here and if they can get the ball back with any time left. T.J. Welch in that quarterback spot. First and 10, their own 46-yard line going left to right. Welch keeps it himself. Around left end. Breaks to the outside, crossing midfield. He's got the 30, now the 20, 10, 5. One play from scrimmage, and Midwatch increases their lead. It's a T.J. Welch, untouched, run for six. So much for controlling the clock with that timeout and uh, the play call and uh, took care of that and got that two-score lead back real quick. T.J. Welch is on his way to Springfield College in the fall, and he's got himself an all-star game memory tonight. I think that's his second touchdown here in the last couple of minutes. He scored off of that uh, uh, onside kick that went awry and gave uh, Midwatch great field position for their last possession. 3.35 to play here in the fourth, 29-17. Klein pending the point after. Josh, Josh Cormier, Cormier of the Lime <laughs> Cleats getting a lot of time tonight, both at the linebacker and holder spot. Ball down, kick is up and through. Back up field come the teams, 3.35 to play in the fourth. It's Midwatch All-Stars, 30 in Central Mass All-Stars, 17. And Kate, you know, this is the type of situation, obviously, you know, we, we were joking with obviously Coach Canterbury and Coach Gates up here about just how sort of, we'll say, funny it is that they didn't know that Josh Cormier could hold. It's just one of those unique <laughs> things like, hey, can anybody hold? And then like everyone takes a step back and who's left yeah, standing one forward, step, right? One step yeah. forward. But then, as yeah. it turns out, it's an all-star <laughs> game. You want to get on the field. You want to have an opportunity to participate. You want to do anything you can so it's everybody can play every position, more or less. Cormier is a holder. Apparently a question that did not come up at Lemonster Blue Devil <laughs> practice over the last four years. Castleton has got to be thinking, uh, you know, maybe – a Castleton State Might holder, an opportunity. you know. Let's yeah. see here, as uh, you maybe, know, maybe you'll yeah. get some chances to hold at the hey. next level. And you know what? If that's the only way Josh Cormier gets on the field, he'd probably step right up and, and practice it a hundred times a day. Darn right. Three thirty-five to play here in the fourth. Klein's got the ball on the tee, forty-yard line at our left. On the approach, swing the right leg, kick is end over end through the middle of the field. It will be returned by Damian Jones from his own 11 yard line. Drops one defender, now races to the left side, crossing the 25, 30, 35, got grabbed up high, crossing the 40, but Jones with a great return from deep in his own end of the field to give Central Mass good field position. First and 10 around their own 41 yard line, going right to left and chasing a gap once again at 30 to 17. Yeah, time's, uh, time's a factor now, down by 13. Going to make something happen in a hurry. The great folks at the Joseph R. Mawinney chapter of the National Football Foundation would like to thank the great folks from Chick-fil-A for their support of this all-star classic. The folks from Chick-fil-A, Westboro, Marlboro, and Worcester, their great support of this eighth annual Central Massachusetts All-Star Classic. First and 10, ball at the 41 yard line, left hash going right to left. Lambert at the quarterback spot for Central Mass. Snap, the roll out, he will set his feet. Look, streaking up the middle of the field, it's a strike! He finds his target and into the end zone once again. It's Marin Brown. Once again, streaking down the middle of the field. It's the roll out strike and into the end zone. And here comes Central Mass once again. They're within seven, 314 to play in the fourth quarter. It's 30 to 23. That certainly didn't take long. Got behind the covers there, perfectly thrown ball. One play, six on the board. One defender, one play, down one end of the field, one defender, one offensive player, streaks, one play, touchdown, and all of a sudden, you alluded to it earlier, Bill Thomas, a video game has broken out. 
I, I mean, I love the action. Uh, just uh, kids haven't given up, especially offensively. Continue to make plays. And thankfully, dry has ensued here at Doyle Field. Halsonieri sends this one to the bar and splits the uprights. Back up field come the teams, 314 to play in the fourth, and we have a six-point game. It's Midwatch All-Stars 30, Central Mass All-Stars 24, right here on RFM Audio and in delay on RFM for our complete video and audio broadcast. If you want to tune in, see the complete video and audio broadcast. Noontime tomorrow, that's June the 17th, a Saturday. We'll have that action for you streaming on YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. The same RFM platforms. RFM so proud to partner with the Joseph R. Mawinney chapter of the National Football Foundation to exclusively bring you this audio play-by-play -play coverage live and the full and complete encore presentation of the broadcast in delay right here on the platforms of RFM. Todd Robbins, Bill Thomas, Kate Robbins, Patrick Robbins, and we've had a cast of thousands seemingly tonight. You know, that third quarter into the beginning of the fourth had all the feels of the Naked Gun movie there where there's like 10 announcers going all in the scene play by play they got all those legends together Take with Leslie Nielsen off the field yeah I mean it was yeah. phenomenal it was, um, it, was a it was a great quarter and very interactive uh, you know the coaching staff great insight uh, you know quarterback coach never stops coaching a lot of coach speak out of him but uh, in the listen Osiris it's just uh, it's going to be a pleasure watching him develop, and I can't wait for the uh, football season to come around in two months. Well, as we move into our 12th season of the Coach's Corner coming up this fall with myself and Lemonster head coach Devin Gates, I will tell you a little, a little surprise change to the program. We will start booking guests to join Coach Gates and myself coming up on the 12th season this fall, and I have to imagine quarterback coach Aaron Canterbury will be on the guest list, so to speak. Good, nothing like expanding. And, uh, hey, knowledge is good. You get more insight pregame about the opponent, about, uh, you know, what uh, whatever transpired the previous game, adjustments, and, uh, and uh, you know, expecting great things out of Lemons, although they did graduate a lot of seniors. Uh, they're pretty stable at that quarterback position. We're going to have to see if Osiris can lead them back to uh, – you know, the, the playoffs again this year. And it is certainly going to be a challenge, you know. They, the coaches, they, they're building up the positivity. But joining Division One, Kate, uh, that's no joke when they're talking about the cream of the crop. But I do agree with Coach Gates' statement. That's where Lemonster belongs historically. Historically speaking, yes, if you talk to people in the community and you hear, you know, oh, Lemonster's in Division Two. you know, what happened? I mean, traditionally, especially in the 80s, you would hear about Lemonster going up against Nashua. You'd hear about them going up against Brockton and Everett. So, I mean, those are those are the big boys, and those are the places that you want to be if you want to be one of the premier programs. And Lemonster has always maintained that they want to continue to be a premier program in Massachusetts. And so Division One Bring St. John's back home. into the fold, I believe, this year. Opening night. Uh, that, I, that's I a great so, opening I night. I didn't want to – Spew it out without. Uh, it was a phenomenal basketball uh, opening night this past absolutely. year, and it will be a phenomenal and, uh, football opening night as well. Looking forward to the, uh, you know, the uh, change in schedule. Some, Second some down. New opponents on the docket. And ten from the 36-yard line, a low snap fielded, and then the handoff made, put into the hands of a new running back. Out there, Mark Moran, he had the great play as an up man. He had a carry earlier on, but this is a new setup with Welch and Moran in the backfield. Newton is out for the Midwatch All-Stars. So Moran gets his chance from Clinton on that carry as well. Josh Kormier uh, in the backfield on the prior had a, had a carry of his own too. I think might have been his first carry offensively tonight. Moran's going to spend his time. He's going to be a Ram at URI. That's the University of Rhode Island coming this fall. Go roadie on that one. 1.59 to play here in the fourth. 30 to 20 for the lead for the Midwatch All-Stars. And great to have you along with us here. To that point, Lemonster High School football. The rivalry, the excitement, the Thanksgiving Day Classic, and a whole bunch more football action across Central Mass. It's going to find its home right here on RFM Audio once again this fall. We cannot wait to bring you our live audio broadcasts each and every week, YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. We appreciate your patience tonight working around the storm um, and some of the technical difficulties that we've worked our way through, water included. But we appreciate the fact that you've hung in there with us, and that's the important part of this 
and we will be back coming up this fall. Billy, Kate, and I cannot wait to bring you every Lemonster game home and away. Our partners from Lemonster TV will join us once again. We'll have that action for you each and every week. Also, our partners at WLPZ Radio, 95.1 FM, have already confirmed that they will be back for the action as well. And, of course, the Thanksgiving Day Classic crowns the season right here on RFM and we're looking forward to bringing you that action, the historic battle of Lemonster and Fitchburg as well. Midwatch football out of the timeout, third down and five to go. Hard count at the 40, they get the jump as the defense got a little itchy and that may be enough for a first down. And I think that's probably what was talked about in that timeout. Let's see if we can't get that first down right there at the at the line of scrimmage without running a play, and it worked to perfection. Indeed it did. Drop the football down at the 45-yard line, and it's a mid-watch first down with 1.58 to go. That might pretty much do it here with one timeout left for the... Uh, Central Mass All-Stars. Central Stars. Mass. I uh, have to see how these last minute, 50 seconds play out. Imagine you keep the ball in uh, TJ's hands here. Coming up post game, they will award their players of the game down on the field. Coach Harold Ogilvie will be down there as the chairman of this event tonight. He will, uh, he will be down there to make those presentations. Stick and stay with us. We'll have them for you here on RFM, both live and in delay as well. Carry continues up the middle. That's TJ Welch on the keeper once again. Across the 45, noses the football to the 47-yard line. They're going to even give him the 48, potentially. Gain of three, second down and seven, and the clock continues. Final 110 and counting here of the fourth quarter as Midwatch looks to ice Central Mass. The final one minute here and take a six-point win in this eighth annual meeting. One more play here, possibly, maybe two, but uh, game winding down, keeping that time out in the pocket. It's been a great game uh, you know, I don't know if uh, calling a timeout, extending the, the game one play is really going to make a difference right now. Second down and seven to go. Shotgun set. Welch in the gun with Moran next to him. The snap. Moran provides the block. Welch with the room into the second level of the defense. Midfield 45 and down to the central mass 40. And quickly whistles and a timeout spent 31 seconds left here in the fourth. And central mass will spend their last timeout. Quick prediction. Yes. We might have seen the, the game MVP just make the game cementing uh, first down right there. Just a, just a thought. Uh, I mean, you just certainly. If you're, of, on, if you're on the mid-watch side, touchdowns you've right got here. Welch with the two late touchdowns, but you've got Ricky Encarnacion with the two too. huge early touchdowns quiet as second well. Half, though, but he did really make a mark on uh, on things in the first half. They sure. aren't balloting up here on press row <laughs> as tends to be traditional, but I'll tell you, that would be a hard choice to choose between those two performances tonight on the offensive side so of things. We go on offense and defense. And then uh, you, go to the, you go to the defensive side of the football, and again, you've got some tough choices there. Josh Cormier played a great game at linebacker. Gio Roman Gio in Roman, there as yeah, well. They're both biased. We are a little bit, but you know, not the well, only Gio's ones. Gio kept losing his helmet, so we had we kept calling his number tonight, but uh, it's because he's just sticking his nose in there on almost every play up front. As you like to say to me, as you're fond of saying, let me finish. Yes, those both have had good defensive performances for Midwatch, but clearly the Midwatch MVP, Dom Vinchula of Shrewsbury, Two interceptions tonight from my side of the ledger. That's the guy you got to point to. Not only did he make the defensive plays, he made them when they counted. And offensively, how about uh, Rafi uh, Bosami? I think he had a couple of touchdowns. And uh, and who else had a couple of catches there as, uh, as time was running down? I know. Uh, well, it's the snap. Central, Central Neil this one down. Good job trying to come back, but uh, just not enough. And the teams are off the sideline. They will not have to run another play. And the camaraderie ensues. This eighth annual Central Massachusetts All-Star Classic goes the way of the Midwatch All-Stars. Midwatch over the rest of Central Mass. Final score, Midwatch 30 and Central Mass 24 in this eighth annual All-Star Classic. Brought to you by the Joseph R. Winnie chapter of the National Football Foundation. And they're phenomenal organizing of another great all-star game. And great to be here to bring it to you exclusively, both audio and video, right here on RFM. Billy, 
Trying to surmise this night. It feels like it's been a four-season kind of day. It's actually beautiful out right now. The it humidity is, is down. <laughs> it's clouded over. but Hopefully the equipment will survive. They, they dry out. But I uh, imagine. Great game, I think. Great sportsmanship. Uh, enough energy to keep things interesting. But I think the kids kept their emotions in check for the most part. You know, not having this kind of contact for four months, five months, six months. Uh, um, it, uh, it must have been tough for some of these kids to put a uniform on. Not that they don't stay in shape, but there's a difference between being in shape and being in football shape. And the coaches will tell you, and the kids will tell you that too. But uh, great job by both teams, by the coach and staff. Keep, uh, keep the kids' heads in the game. And uh, we saw uh, a very entertaining offensively uh, from an offensive standpoint second half. But overall, uh, I'd put a, a stamp on the entire game was entertaining. Oh, no doubt about it. Like I said, this is our second year covering it exclusively, and we have enjoyed every single minute of it. Cannot say enough good things about how proud we are to partner with the Joseph R. Mawinney chapter of the National Football Foundation to bring you this action here. And, and, and I, I have to say, uh, what, is re what has really stood out sort of to me in, in this entire process and, and something that you know we don't uniquely see in high school games for obvious reasons, that is, of course... The celebratory atmosphere. I think, Kate, you can speak to this a little bit. Sportsmanship is such an important part of this, right? Yes. And, and how we, of course, teach things and instill that in student-athletes at this stage. But on a game like this and on a night like this, when everybody's here playing for fun, to have that opportunity to be able to show off their personality a little bit, row in the boat, bowling, a whole sideline celebration from Central Mass, like those sorts of things, it just speaks to the joy of football and the celebration of football this event is. Well, the, the thing about football especially uh, is compared to, to some of the other sports at the, at the high school level, the regular season, every single game is make or break. If you get out to a slow start now with the way that the power rankings are, you're not going to make it to you know to the postseason. And so every single game seemingly in the regular season and, of course, in the postseason is, is essentially do or die. And so in a lot of instances, you don't see the looseness. You don't see just you know the, the excitement and the fun and the fact that these are high school students and that they're, they're still boys, you know, and that, and you don't see that playful side all the time. In a game like today, it's about camaraderie, it's about sportsmanship, and it's about just being boys. And great joy in the sport of football. The organization going on down on the field. We are waiting for public address announcer Dick Tucker and the official information for our stars of this game of stars i mean and that's got to be the hard part you've got a field full of stars in both directions and you're going to pick the stars of stars that is not an easy uh situation to uh, to say the least and especially with this wide open second half we had uh you know a lot of players stepped up let's uh, get the public address here's public address announcer dick tucker They identified in this case, this is Friedman. Lucas Friedman of Millbury gets the award from Central Mass. <laughs> and Noah Barrera gets recognized from the defensive side of things from South High School for the Central Mass All Stars. Now the Midwatch side. Told you it'd be a difficult choice, TJ Welch. Bill Thomas, your prediction later in the game, heroics for the ceiling win for the Midwest. Exactly. What have you done for me lately? And he left quite the impression in the second half. Let me be and Josh Cormier. Not just for his holding heroics, but for his defensive play, careening all over the field in on multiple tackles. 
it's the lime green cleats, and it's a talented student athlete, and Castleton State is getting themselves a phenomenal athlete. Yeah, great choice right there, but I mean, we, we had the pleasure of watching him play all year. And now the overall all-star. <laughs> it's Ricky Encarnacion. And Kate, when we're talking about somebody who embodies oh, yes. joy, oh, yes. Ricky Encarnacion is your person to talk about embodying joy. Anybody that comes near him understands that he is essentially a walking spark of electricity. His personality, his ability to be a tremendous leader, quality person. I mean, the accolades are basically et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You name it, he can do it. And just everybody that, that gets near him adores him. The University of New Haven getting themselves quite the student athlete, I to just, say the least. And I, I can't add any more. I mean, we got to enjoy those two players along with the, the rest of the Blue Devils, but they kind of em amplify what Blue Devils football was this year. And uh, great recognition, good way to end their high school football careers. And what a great way to end this eighth annual playing of the Central Massachusetts All-Star Classic. Midwatch, a winner over the Central Mass All-Stars. 30 to 24, the final score in this one. It has been our absolute pleasure to be here with you tonight on RFM Audio and in delay with our complete and comprehensive broadcast. Again, noontime tomorrow, these same platforms, YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch, streaming from the home studio, so the action complete in its broadcast will be available tomorrow right here on RFM. You can join us and relive this one each and every play of this All-Star Classic. We thank the great folks of the Joseph R. Winnie chapter of the National Football Foundation for their support. Jay Costa, their president, their vice president, and the chairman of this game this particular season. Clinton coach Harold Ogilvie, we thank them so much for their partnership. Tom McCarthy was up here on the clock. Phenomenal resource as well. And all the great folks at the Joseph Armour Winnie chapter of the National Football Foundation. We thank them so much for partnering with us here at RFM. And the foundation would like to thank Chick-fil-A of Westboro, Marlboro, and Worcester for their support of the mission of the Joseph R. Winnie chapter of the National Football Foundation and this Central Massachusetts All-Star Game. Kudos to them for supporting the student-athletes football-wise here in Central Mass. That about does it for us here on RFM Audio and in delay on RFM, where we say thank you so very much for joining us. More exciting action to come. Football is on deck in the fall, but we got more baseball action coming to you. Join us coming this very week no next week june the 27th is our next date it's tuesday june the 27th it's framingham and lemonster post 151 versus post 74 we'll have that action for you here on rfm from Le mclaughlin field in lemonster also coming up a few uh, months uh, you know a few weeks are? later i do a few <laughs> weeks oh, later are? i've got so much going What's on the date my arm is asleep we'll <laughs> yeah. get to that later on i'll take it um the, the action <laughs> continues let me get through the promo and we'll move on <laughs> off the top of my head more legion action to come coming up on july the 6th from worcester Fit and Field in Worcester. The Worcester Bravehearts hosting a Legion Classic night. It's free baseball. Communities of Lemonster and Shrewsbury post 151, post 397. It's going to be an entirely free night of baseball. They're going to run it just like a Bravehearts home game with all the promotions and all of the excitement. We'll have the action for you here on RFM, but we welcome you to join us down I-190 for Lemonster and Shrewsbury on the Legion side of things. And then... As I said, football is on deck coming up this fall. Coach's Corner, 12th season, right back here on RFM, YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch, as well as every Lemonster game home and away with the live audio right here on RFM Audio. Like, follow, and subscribe when the action goes live. It finds you. Once again, the final score, the 8th Annual. Central Massachusetts All-Star Classic. The Midland Wachusett All-Stars, 30. The Central Massachusetts All-Stars, 24. For all of us here at RFM, and until next year's ninth edition of this game, which I can go out on a limb and say, you can join us right back here for, right here on RFM. We can't wait to be here for edition number nine of this classic. For Bill Thomas and Kate Robbins, 
Leominster head coach Devin Gates, Aaron Canterbury, Osiris Lopez, and Coach Harold Ogilvy, all who joined us on this broadcast tonight. I am Todd Robbins saying thank you so very much for joining us. Relive this one tomorrow in replay right here on RFM. Until next time, we say so long, everybody. Tradition, legacy, history. These words all describe a player, coach, or contributor's impact on a game, program, or generation. Each week this season, student athletes of this generation will square off with the goal of best representing their community today or for years to come. Neil O'Connor finds Jake Elaine. For Alan Glenny, quarterback, his ball club. Zaki ice in the end zone. And calling signals, Dave Pelosi. John Ulecki. Warren Muir. LaQueer, LaQueer, LaQueer. Jack Rodequins. Bobby Mativier. Jason Toombley. Devin Gates. Quentin Tiggs. Cortez Ludden. D. Geronimo. Stephanides. Sean Dupiece McDonald. Graham. Quentin Perkins. Geraldo Rivera. Gray makes the catch in the end zone for the touchdown. <laughs> Who will have their name weaved among the tapestry of legends? Who can add their name among the football greatest in central Massachusetts? You'll find out right here on RFM. Continuing a legacy and tradition of audio excellence established by generations of great play-by-play -play teams gone before. Yours truly, Tom Connery, Dave Spence, and Warren Muir. This is Joe White. With me this morning, Chris Dickey and Ron Lamar. Ed Cole along with Joe DeCarolis and Mark Landon. This is Dave Clark along with Mike Flynn. I'm Dave Spence along with my partner here, Luke Connery. Todd Robbins alongside Ben Parker. Todd Robbins, Bill Thomas, Kate Robbins, and you. Great to have you along with us. Stories told through the words spun by legends. The stories continue to be described by the award-winning team of today. It's time for high school football with the award-winning team of Todd Robbins, Bill Thomas, and Kate Robbins.